Welcome, welcome everybody. <clears throat> My voice a little gone. Uh, sorry about that, but welcome to Classic Cast uh, number twenty-one, I believe. We have Classic Cast number twenty-one. We're here with Civ HD. Our guest. Hey guys. Tips out. Stay safe. Hi everyone. Um, <clears throat> It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time for sure. So a lot of you guys, uh, a lot of you guys may know Civ. Some of you may not. Uh, Civ is a uh, I mean, formerly focusing on on League of Legends uh, YouTuber, but a long time uh, WoW player, long time classic WoW fan. And uh, Civ, actually, if you want to go ahead and introduce yourself. Yeah, uh, sure thing. Thank you. That was already a great introduction. I've been um, very busy with League of Legends, but my chat is already distracting me. Cover that. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like he changed. <laughs> changed my introduction. Um, yeah, I've been um, playing WoW Classic when it came out on the mm -hmm. American server a very long time ago when I was a kid. And uh, a while ago, I met Asfond during the, you know, the private servers when that was mm -hmm. the hype. And uh, now I'm very happy to be here to talk about my love for the game and uh, everything that I think is great in it to try and win some souls over, maybe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course, okay. of course. Is that good? Yeah, no, that that's great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so Siv, Siv and I first met kind of kind of in the old uh, the YouTube days, and uh, Siv actually, <laughs> this was uh, when I was a streaming noob. Now I'm just bad at streaming. Before I was a noob and I was bad at streaming, but uh, I had a problem with like my notifications going off nonstop, and Siv DM'd me on Twitter, <laughs> and he was like, hey, like you can do this to fix it, and I didn't see it till after the stream. But I was like, "Oh, like great, thanks, man." And I, I didn't know, uh, like I knew, I knew of Civ, but I didn't know, I didn't know Civ was Civ. So I actually, I, I intermittently go back to to playing League of Legends every now and then, and I was like, "Man, like I was singing in my head, like what would AP Zans and and I was like, "Man, I'm gonna go look up that video," and I click on it. I was like, "Wait, that's that's." That's Siv. Like Siv did this video. <laughs> I was like, like I didn't know. I used to watch his videos. Like all, like I didn't yeah. even know it was him. But yeah, no, it was it was great. But um, I'm older than I look. Yeah, yeah. The uh, the the old dogs of uh, of League of Legends back in the day. So, no, it's uh, it's been great. So, what did you? Uh, <clears throat> I mean, we we haven't really gotten any any news recently, and it's been a while since we've done a classic cast. Um, yes. But uh, what did you think? When we haven't caught up with you since BlizzCon. What did you kind of think about everything that you heard at BlizzCon? I thought it sounded really promising. Mm -hmm. It sounds like they're sticking to the plan, which I like. And it sounds like everything I want WoW Classic to be is going to be in there. I was a bit disappointed. I have to wait so long, but that, that shouldn't damage the game, you know? Yeah. Uh, that'll just generate more hype, really. Mm -hmm. So... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, especially there are so many games that release early or early access and they end up just flopping. So I am totally Atlas. okay with games taking long. I, I'm okay <laughs> with it. Let's just say it. Let's just say they'll, yeah. be, they'll be polished when they do come out. I'm okay with that. That's true. That's true. Do you consider yourself in the in the no changes camp, Civ, or in the changes camp? Do you want to see vanilla as it was? or I, I, I'm not ideas? in the no changes camp in the way that um, I guess I am in the no change is camp because I don't trust Blizzard. You know, I, th I think they can't not fuck it up if they were allowed to do that. But I do think I, I, I value WoW Classic for its gameplay, like the game mode. I think it's better. I think it's great. And I would love to talk more about that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, so stuff like graphics or like, I, I don't care. Like, if it's up to me, they could update the graphics. I wouldn't care, and um, yeah. a lot of those things. Yeah, you're 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 more like because, and I've talked about this before, right? There's a there's a difference between uh, nostalgia and gameplay, like the reasons why people like classic, and uh, a lot yeah. of people like classic a lot more for the gameplay than people give it credit for. Uh, but yeah. I, for me personally, like I, there's there's a big uh, like that's that's a big focus for me. But there's certain like aspects from like the nostalgia standpoint that it's like. I really, I, I really prefer the older graphics just straight up to the newer graphics. Like I understand like the newer graphics look nicer and this and that, but I really don't like a lot of the new animations. And one of the hardest things for me, whenever I first started playing retail after uh, not playing after for classic. a while, yeah, it's like yeah. I started playing and it was, it was, I couldn't track what was happening on the screen because it looked so different. Like there was lights and stuff was flashing and 
I, I didn't really like that so much. Like I was just like, I, I, I felt like an old man, dude. It was bad. Yeah. Uh, like I already I feel like an that. old man in real life, but <laughs> in game it was not good. So, um, so yeah, for sure. I mean, we, <clears throat> we, we've talked about this quite a bit, like, you know, the, the BlizzCon news and all that. And, um, actually, you know, talking about the, uh, talking about the timing of when it releases, uh, stay safe. had talked about this before and you, you might want to expand on it, but, uh, talking about the, the summer release date and what that could actually mean. And, uh, if it being longer is actually good, stay safe. Do you want to, do you want to go in on that? Yeah, so they've said it'll come out in summer 2019. Summer, I guess, technically ends, you know, midway through September. I would bet that we'll probably see it in September, you know, maybe late August. But I, I would bet September. I think they're probably going to take as much time as they possibly can. They were sort of vague with the summer. They said summer. That's, you know, that's like four months or four and a half months. So that could be anywhere in there. But I, I would guess it's it's mid-September. Now, one thing that is maybe worth discussing, we can talk about this, is when are we going to get an alpha? When are we going to, when are we going to get mm. a beta? If we look back at Legion, WAD, and BFA, they, on average, they have their alpha come out seven months prior to release. That do, would do put you, us in. Sorry. Would you really need a beta? Yeah, I think so. Like, I, think so. I think so. I think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think so. Yeah. yeah. What? What for? Yeah. Like, I'm I'm open to the idea, but could you explain? Because to me, it's like we've played this game. We know what it needs to be. It's not like we want gameplay tested. So did you did you play on the demo very much? I, I, I avoid it. Avoid it. So <laughs> if you had played the demo, I think you wouldn't be asking the question. There's, oh, there's really? a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of rough edges that I think need okay. to be worked out. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of rough edges. Yeah. Uh, right. They're downporting, they're downporting the game from the current client sieve. So uh -huh. instead of firing up, you know, patch 1.12, they're essentially taking the modern game and then recreating classic on top of it. So yes. It created a lot of problems, a lot of inconsistencies. So I think a beta would be good, like so you can test all those inconsistencies. Just the bug testing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so what I was going to say is with the last three expansions that they've come out with, the alphas come out seven months prior to release. That would put, if, if, the, if Classic WoW follows the same trend, that would put the alpha in February next month. So maybe, maybe we could see Classic Alpha if they're going to do that next month. Fingers crossed. Confirmed. Mm -hmm. You're on class. Okay. I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, we can only hope. But, uh, well, going back to the note, I want to go back. Sorry for yeah. interrupting. No, 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 go ahead. Yeah. Uh, we were talking about possible changes, and we mentioned this before the stream mm -hmm. that I heard there was one no change uh, tips out. He's, he wants the population locked at the, what it used to be, like the 3K. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. And, and from the my time in the private servers, I thought the 10K was great. I thought yeah. it made it better. I thought that was great. Could you elaborate on why uh, 3K is, is so good for you? Well, there's, there's kind of two things at play here. Um, there's my personal preference, and then there's, I think, what's, what might be a little bit better for, for the whole game. Right. Mm -hmm. And... Um, I do think there's magic in having a 3K server in the sense that, you know, you walk into Orgrimmar or Ironforge and you see that same group of people over and over again. Um, mm -hmm. You establish that community. Everybody knows everybody. All the mm -hmm. guilds know each other. Um, whereas on like a 10, 12K server, because the population's so big, it almost feels like a cross-realm zone at times. It feels like, you know, there's just too many people right. to keep track of everybody. Um, I 100% I see where you're coming from. And and I heard that point being made during the, the classic cast with the devs, that mm -hmm. that is why they like 3K. But to be honest, um, I, I, and I agree that phasing the servers really damages what you like there. You know, they're mm -hmm. recognizing people. Like you may as well be seeing ghosts in Dark Souls. You know, right. like I'm never gonna, I don't know who this is. I'm never gonna see him again. Yeah. But um, I do feel like in the 10K, I did recognize a lot of people. You know. When I was traveling, going on a boat, I did feel like still I recognize a lot of these guys. Maybe even, maybe it would even happen more than on a 3K server in that definitely. way. Yeah, like definitely understandable. And like, I don't want to say I don't like playing on 10K servers because I do. And there's a lot of benefits to that too. Um, and like, I honestly, internally, I ping pong back and forth. But I think the right. thing that makes me really commit to the 3K 
is the whole changes versus no changes thing. Even population, right. it was what it was. If we open up that door to change even that, you've got yeah. everybody and their mother saying, oh, we want to change this, we want to change that. It's like- Yeah, you don't want to open <clears throat> the door. So one, yeah. one sort of, you know, opening the door, so to speak, if you have more, you know, you have 10K people, how are you yeah. adjusting herb nodes? How are you adjusting mob respawn rates? How are you adjusting yeah. world, bo world boss respawn rates? It, it, there are so many implications and you have, you can't just, it's not just as simple as population cap. It, there are a million domino effect things that trigger off of that. Mm -hmm. well, it's like, so, uh... so I feel like we all know um, what the lights hope guys did there. You know, the, the, mm -hmm. the equation that it's killed. Mm -hmm. Is there something about that that you're not happy with? Cause it sounds that way when you say there's things in motion that happen. So what, what I'm a favor of, what I'm in favor of is I, I think on an alpha or a beta, I think uh -huh. they should find the largest, this, this is sort of middle ground between the two of you guys. They should find the largest reasonable amount of people that the unaltered, same respawn rates, everything, vanilla version of Azeroth can accommodate. It was two and a half or 3000. Maybe that's four and a half or 5,000 without changing anything. What's the max player load that this world without any respawn rates or anything like that can accommodate reasonably? Mm -hmm. and, and go with that but that would take a lot of testing and uh, that would take a lot of effort i would i would yeah. prefer that though mm -hmm. uh, yeah i think uh, I, 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 when I, when, oh, man. I keep talking at the same uh, time well no, no it's good go ahead go ahead but uh, i want to i want to hear your, if you have questions like i want to hear your questions because this, is, this right. is good yeah i i feel like i went into this on the 10k player cap boat but now i'm adapting because i feel like <laughs> not opening the doors is a great idea and I can also see, I think, the the, the whole part where you, there's a limited amount of resources. And I think, you know, it affects the auction house and everything mm -hmm. if you uh, create a lot more of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think, think that's uh, kind of where you were going. Well, it, it's like the, the kind of like the butterfly effect. Uh, yeah. Sort of thing, right? Where it's like you change one thing and it snowballs into a bunch of other stuff. I think, um, <clears throat> I think one of the biggest issues is... Uh, whenever it comes to population cap is people have people play the game like people have played the game more recently right on private servers and you know in some other aspect and then they remember playing the game back then and then they know the facts right and then they look at like okay yes. like allegedly it was about like 3000 was the population cap and and we we talked to um so before uh, I'm hoping I hope I'm remembering this correctly, uh, but before everybody kind of thought that it was it was purely a technical limitation, uh, and that's what John Stats had told us. John Stats told us that that he he was pretty sure he wasn't 100 percent like on that side of things because he's more doing level design stuff, and he said he thought it was a little technical limitation. And then when mm -hmm. we had Mark Kern on, Mark Kern told us that uh, that it was it, they did that by design. So they, I mean, maybe like some technical stuff like came into play, but that was something that they did by design. Like they wanted it at about three thousand. So. <clears throat> Uh, that was something that a lot of people were. Uh, I, I think nobody really knew that. Nobody really knew that it, like what it was for sure, hundred percent. But uh, that's what we heard from them. So, the the question that comes into play after that is, do I want that experience from like what I know, what the facts are, and, and what I used to play on, or is my experience from playing on a private server with like ten, twelve k, eight k pop? Uh, is that something that yeah. I found really enjoyable, and then it kind of like throws off what. Uh, what I think would be best. That's the main yeah. thing. What's going to be best for the game? And uh, if you have 8K, 10K, 12K pop, there's probably going to need to be something changed on the back end, whether it's dynamic respawns, uh, a lot like what a, what a lot of the private servers do, uh, which Nano, actually we had Nano. Nano was on my stream. I don't know if he said this on the podcast, but Nano from NOS, he was quality assurance for the NOS team. He said that he thought dynamic respawns probably would not be a good solution. If there was, if there was higher population caps, it probably would not be a good solution. And that's somebody who okay. did that on NOST. Um, I've got a different question thing. on the population, mm -hmm. which I think is relevant to all of us here. Mm -hmm. Do you, uh, right now we're in the, the, the age of streamers and YouTubers mm -hmm. and 3k is not many people for a big streamer, right? Like wouldn't Asmo gold server always be five year queue? You know, very much. Yeah. So, you know, it does something need to happen there. I feel like that is a, a, a reasonable issue. Like I, a valid I, problem. I, I feel like you can't, they can't design classic web servers around streamers. 
right uh -huh. yes maybe maybe the first day or two there'll be long login queues after yeah. 24 hours 48 hours people get pissed off they'll go somewhere else that's a that's, good point that's, that's how it's just gonna have to be i think it fixes itself <clears throat> i i think in general <laughs> like you I, I think it's uh it, it depends on the type of game you're making right uh, i think it, it's it's a good idea for like the marketability of your game to make a game stream friendly, but uh -huh. that's not what like classic. Why doesn't need that? Right. Classic. The, the game is the content. Aye. It's, it's going to be just fine on its own. Uh, I think to, to do things to kind of like cater to streamers uh, as far as, well, I, I should say changing like large scale things, right. Because of streaming mm -hmm. alone is, um, it's probably not a good idea. Uh, that's what I would that's think true. right now. But, uh, I think because because it'll it'll probably just snowball and it's like this means this this means that, um, I I think you're gonna have a case for sure like, there are twenty thousand people watching whatever streamer whether it's like Asmin or maybe Soda or whoever, and um, a large percentage of that player or that the viewer base is gonna want to play with them. But the reality of it is, is they're going to realize that they're not going to be able to. There's only X amount of people in the raid. There's only X amount of people in the guild. Uh, and there's only, a, well, I guess X, Y, Z. There's Z amount of people in the server, right? Yes. I, I think I think that's going to be the biggest thing that happens. Okay. That, that was one thing that I thought about. I will talk about this on the stream. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's about the game design principles I have and that I think are applied very well in uh, wow vanilla and not so well in retail wow and i think those two rules are respect the distance and put value on stuff yeah mm -hmm. so items have to be very valuable and mm -hmm. sometimes those two things intertwine and i have an example yeah that's right i already see question marks i, I i've got an <laughs> example to me so you all know where i'm coming from yeah okay so imagine you're like level 29 warrior and uh, you're going to the question marks yeah all right uh... you're going to nomurga okay right you're, you're going there you uh you found friends you maybe you brought in two buddies and uh, they asked you filled from trade chat or something mm -hmm. you went to the place you did the dungeon takes a while and at the end you get that um the therma plugs left mm -hmm. arm the, the the big axe right okay. And in WoW Classic, that axe, you're going to be using it for quite a while, right? Because it'll probably be good for seven or six levels. Mm -hmm. And if you play a couple hours a day, that might be a week or two. That's quite a while. Mm -hmm. so, so you're excited about this item. You're like, wow, I've got this item. I'm going to use it for a very long time. I feel much stronger now. Mm -hmm. And you also feel value for that item because of what it took to get it, right? So walking there is applied there in that value but also how rough it was to just get people to go there because there was no group finder right those rough edges apply extra value to the items that you end up getting because it was harder to get it's true now yeah. if you go in retail and i just queue first of all i'll just queue right i don't talk to the party blah 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 we've all bashed this a million times i get the item but after that not only do i feel less value because it was easy to get Two hours later, this item is now irrelevant. I already have something better, or I'll have out-leveled it because there's 120 levels that take the same amount of time as 60. I don't know why they did that. I think <laughs> when they squished the numbers, they should have just made it 60 levels again so that if you're leveling, the stuff you find is actually relevant. Like, that right. would have been great. I don't know why they didn't do that. But that was a big opinion that I wanted to shove into the table today. Yeah. No, I think uh yeah. I, I think I think that's a hundred percent true. Like you look at uh you look at any game. You look at Dark Souls, right? Like we we just played Dark Souls and dude last night I, I, I killed a boss in Dark Souls and it took me literally ninety six attempts. And I was just beating my head against the wall. Yeah. Like literally almost a hundred times. <laughs> and I I whenever I finally beat him, like it felt really, really good. Right. I got I got like a, a big sense of accomplishment out of that. Um I think to the same extent <clears throat> or to, in that, in that same vein, like whenever you're playing classic or uh, whenever yeah. you're playing any other game, right? Like in classic, like you go through and like you said, you go to the dungeon, you, you do the thing. No more gone is, is a, 
complete just it's, it's totally aids like if you're doing nomergon at the right level in vanilla wow it's one of the worst dungeons that you could possibly yeah, do yeah it's hard yeah so so you do it you get through it and then uh you know you, you get your items at the end you get whatever you're looking for and then that's awesome like that feels good and you, you know you might have that axe until uh who knows like you might pick up a freaking pendulum of doom in uh old man and use it instead of selling it for some reason i don't know right maybe a stone slayer or, or uh rock pounder or whatever um, yeah but yeah no there, like, there's there's a bunch of stuff that you could get uh but whenever you get a yeah. good item like it's going to stay with you for a while and then whenever it, you look at max it, level like you you have it for maybe that entire raid tier right that's so true. it has to either be difficult to get it mm -hmm. uh or it has to be scarce Mm -hmm. yeah. And even that, I think, is better in vanilla. Like, if I go to Molten Core, I manage to get 40 nerds into a Discord, which is hard. I'll, that is the difficulty right there. Mm -hmm. And then not that many items drop, right? Right. And that is also, that adds a lot of value to the items. Mm -hmm. Right now, I kind of expect something to get something out of anything I do in retail. Uh, well, yeah, not, I will. not only... Not only does the item have to drop, you know, you're going to have a master looter and he has to loot it to you. You sort of yeah. have to, you have to, you have to get that proc twice almost. Yeah. It has to drop, yeah. you have to be given that's it. That's true. That's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. And uh, that, that's why, like, items are just much more hype in that game, you know? And even when you're leveling, all the things you find are relevant in a way. So even the copper ore, even like killing a wolf top and I get the leather or even like cooking ingredients, they are relevant in a way that I could sell it on auction house and the money carries value to me, you know, like money in classic is valuable. Whereas on retail, you could just buy it. So, you know, yeah. the economy is so good in wow classic that it just keeps ties the whole game together. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's something I really miss in retail because in a way, well, I, I really like to compare games to board games. Because when you talk about board games, it's all about the gameplay. It's not about the graphics or anything. Yeah. It's about the gameplay. And yeah. while Classic is a better board game, because the economy is half the game in a way, or maybe even yeah. more than half. Mm -hmm. And well, dude, uh, that, that's how you always have something to do. I totally agree. I've ranted about this a million times. I mean, I, I think old MMOs were so popular because they were a completely separate, different social hierarchy, right? So in real yeah. life, it doesn't matter if you're rich. No, it, it does matter in real life. What I'm trying to say is, if, if you have if you have a lot of money or a big dip yeah. or whatever, it doesn't matter. If you you come in you come into an MMO, none of that matters. Yes. The only thing that matters in the MMO, none of that stuff carries over to the MMO. The only thing that matters is how you perform within the game. Yes. And I mean, imagine chess. Imagine chess. Mm -hmm. If you could pay fifty dollars and buy and buy another queen, or if you could resurrect your queen for fifty dollars. Yeah, that, that would suck. Be Done deal, dude. Easy wins. Yeah. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Easy wins. But also, I, I also feel like. If I'm grinding, imagine I go grind for uh, Dragon Whelplings. That's something I like to do in Classic. Easy way mm -hmm. to make money and uh, to turn my brain off completely. Even more than normal. And um, imagine I, I, I manage to grind four dragons in a couple of days. I go to the auction house. I make my couple hundred gold. I'm like, all right, feels good. And then some dude just comes mm -hmm. in. Oh, that took you two days. I just bought like 10 times that. You know, yeah. like yeah that that feels bad like that just lowers the value on what i just did big time you know mm -hmm. absolutely yeah, so, especially in classic where a lot of the greatest items are boes and that's one yeah. of the biggest differences between vanilla and retail is like lionheart helm you know titanic yeah. leggings you know even like cloud keep like there's so many good devil sword there's so many good boes in the game that mm -hmm. if you added a cash shop it would it would just be off it would like, destroy it, the game you know, yeah destroy yeah. the game like in well, retail yeah. They have the token in retail, but like realistically, what are you gonna, what are you gonna buy with the token in retail? You know. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm coming off a little hard here. I don't know if I'm making the chat pull back if I say this, but I always feel like every single expansion that comes out, where you can still buy gold, is an insult to the players, mm -hmm. big time. Like that is an insult to the players. You because they are they they know it's it it's bad for the game. They know, you know. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, yeah. I, I, I always am very mad at Blizzard for that, and I rant about that a lot. But uh, yeah, I think yeah. I think pretty much I, having having the ability to to I I really like I, I don't care that much about cosmetic items. I really don't. Um, but whenever it comes to anything that that you can uh, buy with like real money to uh, 
Well, I mean, uh, okay, well, I'll just go ahead and finish what I was saying. But if, if there's anything you can buy with money that's going to basically make you better or stronger in the game, uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty much like 99.9% .9 of the time. Uh, I will that. up you there. I will okay. up you there. And MMO is all about being fucking awesome. I want right. to walk through Stormwind and feel like you want to feel like badass. Balls, yeah, you know? exactly. I want to. I want to yeah. feel badass. So if I can buy a skin, that's fucked. You yeah. know. Yes. 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 Yeah. Sorry. Buying skins or transmogs is pay to win. Right. Because winning is feeling like you look sick. You right. know. I don't want that in my games. I don't want that. Right. Yeah. And and what I was thinking, like what I was thinking about specifically, whenever I had a little bit of pause there, uh, like I was thinking about Path of Exile. Like I, I, I bought like uh, the, the bonus bank slots or whatever for Path of Exile. I think that like if, if you have a game like that that's free to play and and uh, it, it wants you, you want to do like a you want to support the company right like I, I'm joining this game this is great whatever I'll, yeah, yeah sure I'll buy a few bonus bank slots or like in League of Legends buying skins there if you want to buy some skins sure right. that that's kind of like a little bit different thing uh, but yeah no that's like whenever it comes to MMOs um, I think like you should not be able to do stuff to like with real money to, to basically buy to progress your character like that no so. well. It should especially not replace uh, something. Maybe if it's like this complete separate thing. Mm -hmm. But even then, you know, don't open the doors like we said before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. In, 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 in classic, well, scarcity of gold influences player behavior so much. I mean, if, if you just mm -hmm. walk around, you ask people, why are you in this dungeon? Oftentimes it's to get gold. Why are you out here killing these monsters in the middle of nowhere? It's to get gold. Why are you doing this? Yeah. It's to get gold. Why are you doing that? It's to get gold. Like the the second you the second you remove that sense of scarcity, you end up with people AFK in their central town complaining there's nothing to do, which is where we're at right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. I was talking a while ago um, that because people were saying retail is unfixable. It's unfixable. You can't fix it anymore. Like there's all the gold in there and selling it. I, I think it's fixable, but you just have to like put take a shotgun and put it to some stomachs. Like <laughs> like you would have to literally delete all the gold. Like for like at the start expansion, we're all, it's all gone now. Like we deleted it. You can't buy it anymore. Restart. Go. Like that. Yeah, that's yeah. that's how you fix that. But they're they aren't gonna do that. You know. Yeah. Well, and I I think the it's not a one expansion problem. That's that's how bad that that's how bad a lot of the stuff's gotten. Right. To where you have to phase things out. Like you can't just like delete the gold. Like you said. You know that's not something that like they sure like if they were to like make a new game from scratch like to start at this point whatever. But they feel yeah. like as a company like there's there's probably no way that they that you know that they could go through and do that. Like okay, all of a sudden now boom, like we're not gonna have transmog or something, right? I, I really don't think. <clears throat> I don't think. I mean, I'll like, do it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'll do it. I don't. I don't like. Uh, I'm like I'm not a fan of transmog necessarily, but. Uh -huh. Whenever I was playing uh, BFA is a little bit better as far as like art design, but whenever I was playing Legion, I was like I could not imagine playing this game without Transmog because I think everything looks so stupid. Like, I didn't like how anything looked pretty much after like I, I like mm -hmm. how some of the older stuff looked, but like I mean like the newer stuff, like I just was like God, like what the hell is going on here? Yeah, you know. No, I th I think a lot of those <laughs> things are good for retail, like transmogging or, or you know yeah. Mythic Plus dungeons. There's a lot of things in retail that are good for retail right. because they are busy keep mechanics because mm -hmm. that game. It's a game where nothing you do fucking matters. So you need busy keep mechanics. You need you need like something to keep you going. Mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't want any of those things in a game where 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 you know everything is relevant and you don't need random busy keep mechanics mm -hmm. like WoW Classic. Exactly. Like you, you don't need any of that. You don't need transmog farming. You don't need any of that stuff. The gameplay itself is sufficient. And um, a lot of that has to do with what you talked about earlier, Sid, with the whole, like, you know, getting a level 29 axe and all those rough edges and stuff. Yeah. Like, when you have... When the game itself is challenging, when it's time-consuming, not artificially, but organically, because that's how the mm -hmm. world works, mm -hmm. then, yeah, you don't, need, you don't need any of that extraneous crap. I agree. Mm -hmm. No. No, but even, like, to get back on Mythic Plus, I know it's, like, considered uh, a successful feature, and it's, pop it's a popular feature. Mm -hmm. Um but I think even that, there is the damage that it does here and there. For example, um, if I'm in, in um, Classic and I'm like, yo, I did Onyxia, then I did Onyxia. People are like, wow, you did Onyxia? I did that once. Right, that's cool. Just like if we share stories about mm -hmm. Dark Souls bosses, we did this. We went through this. Yeah. And in, in uh, Legion or BFA, if I'm like, yo, I did this dungeon, you're like, oh, oh you did that dungeon, huh? Mm -hmm. What did you do it on? Did you pl plus 10? Plus 10? <laughs> yeah. 
I have plus there's, there's so many specifics. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Suddenly, the, the the feeling of achievement and and purity of 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 what have I done? What have I achieved? Mm -hmm. Is gone. Like that's gone. Like I'd rather have the dungeon, and then if I want something harder, there's just a different dungeon. You know. Right. And then I, I did this, and it keeps the items clean. Just that item. You don't need like a plus ten item. It keeps the game clean. I like right. that. So uh, well, even like, those popular features. Not, keep it not only is it a plus ten item, it's plus ten Warforged, Titan Forge, Titan Forge. <laughs> yeah, it, dude, that's like, like... <laughs> it literally like. Yeah. It might as well. It, it's like a. It's like a stupid version of the Path of Exile talent tree. Like it's basically like what it is. It's like SpongeBob spatula. Uh, yeah, like it, it, doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> so like, you have, like uh, for example, with LFR, and and I've talked about this before with LFR. If somebody just wants to like see the content. They can just do it on LFR and they can see the bosses, whatever. And it's like, okay, I saw it. But mm -hmm. <clears throat> like you, you look back on it now and so many of us are in this situation where it's like you, you talk to somebody who's like, oh, I did an axe in retail. Right. And they actually did an axe mm -hmm. in retail. Not they were 12 and they got rank 14 and, and killed KT solo or whatever. But like people who like actually did an axe in retail and they're like, like I'm like, dude, like that's that's sick. Like that's badass. Like you actually like, yeah. You did an action retail. Like that's awesome. Uh, like, yeah. I mean, I like I've I've done it since on you know I've I've cleared all the content like on private server and stuff like since. But um, to do it in retail, wow, like it's it's really really cool. And even on, actually even on private server, like there's not like a, a overwhelming majority of the population that has cleared all the content on private server. I would even say, but that's oh not yeah, good. it's too much. It takes an insane amount of dedication yeah. from a huge group of people and. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say stuff like, well, you know, classic, it's not going to be the same because we already know how to do it. We don't, we know how to do this or that. Mm -hmm. But the fact you have to take 40 people together, like that's big, mm -hmm. get all of them to go there, 40 people, like that alone and the scarcity of items makes that thing fun to do. It's not like yeah. if you play a board game like Catan, that yeah. it's going to be boring when you know the fucking rules, you know, or Monopoly. It, right. it, it, it doesn't change that. Dude, right, exactly. that 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 we already know how to do it so trivial or it doesn't matter like that's such a stupid argument every every guild other than like method that's getting world first boss kills is watching other guilds videos kill videos they're reading guides about it they're yeah they're reading forum posts like right. no one other than the top one two or maybe three guilds is doing this content originally without right. any assistance exactly well, that's and, true. And, the, and the whole we already know how to do it thing it's like the gym right we all know how to lose weight we all know how to get in shape but very few of us take that knowledge and then add the dedication to it to work out every single day to get into shape. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's like we could have all the knowledge in the world. If not putting the effort and the dedication day in, day out, every single day, you're never going to reach your goals. Yeah. Uh -huh. it, I mean, it's, it's about like uh, it's, it's about actually like the process of getting there. Right. It's, it's about the process. I think uh, like sure. Like, OK, going back to Dark Souls again. You can go and you can do dark. I can go online and I can go watch a playthrough of Dark Souls. I'm like, oh great, like I I, I did it, right? Yeah. Uh, that doesn't really count, you know. Like that, I that's really fun. Like it might be analogy. entertaining. Yeah. No, I I, I totally agree. Because it feels like you went to the gym after multicore. Like, oh. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But uh, no, I Feel think like I think all that stuff is like really good. And after <clears> one time, <throat> no, people will not see the difference in you. But if you went a couple of times, people yeah. are gonna be able to tell you went to multicore. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's really good. Um, so yeah, I think uh, I I think whenever it comes down to all that with uh, the you've already like we've already done it, we already know. It's like no, like you don't know, like you 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 know the outline, you don't know the process. Like you you haven't you haven't gone through the process. It's totally different. Yeah. Words equals LFR. No, LFR is Tinder. LFR is Tinder. LFR teaches you, and Dungeon Finder teaches you that that people, other players in the game, are disposable. You use them, and then after after you're done with the dungeon, done with the raid, you'll never discuss. You'll never talk to them ever again. Yeah. And yeah. and you 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 are encouraged to mm -hmm. fuck them over actually a little yeah. bit. You know, kind of yeah, like there because there's no there's no in it's it's indirect right. There's no incentive yeah. to actually like build relationships with people in that in that aspect of the game. There's no incentive to actually build relationships with people and to work with people and to be like oh okay yeah. uh, at least from like a like a you know like I, I guess bottom line scenario i can just do my thing whatever i'll get my loot and i'll leave like i only need yeah. these guys to to queue up for the dungeon but, i really uh, like that back in classic like sometimes someone would be, would be like hey uh lfg uh scarlet crusade and then right below that there will be people like don't queue if that guy steals everything you know like don't queue if that guy <laughs> like you can't change his name like yep. you're ruined yep and uh that's a great thing 
absolutely. True. Mm-hmm. This is this is this is back when when your behavior actually mattered. Reactions <clears throat> actually like you you could you could fuck up. You're in Duskwood. Now you're 60, two months later, and they remember your name, and they're not going to take you to their BlackRock Devs group. Yep. Like, your decisions actually have agency. They actually matter. They have, they have an impact, actually. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Dude, I, I'm... One thing, I, sorry, sorry, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. You can go ahead. Well, no, exactly. Like, one thing I see from a lot of new MMOs, because I follow, like, a lot of MMOs, mm-hmm. but uh, one thing I always see is, like, in all of their advertising trailers, they always say, be whatever you want to be. Be a thief. Be a, be a, a knight. Be this. Be that. But the actual tools that are in place in the game don't allow you to be anything you want to be. Like, oh, That's be right. a thief, but there's nobody you can steal from because you can just queue up into different dungeons and farm gold as much as possible um, because of things like LFR and so on and so forth. One thing that Vanilla allowed you to do, it's like, yeah, if you want to be a bad guy, if you want to be a villain on your server, you can be a freaking villain on your server. If you want to do, yeah. you know, if you want to be a righteous mofo, you can do that too. And mm-hmm. it's like, Vanilla isn't a sandbox game, but it's it's very... It has some sandbox elements. It's that very open-ended. Have... Exactly, exactly. One uh, thing I noticed is that I was expecting some feeling of nostalgia when I went back to private servers, you know, because I, I, I played vanilla originally, and back then going on a private server is kind of just like being scuffed, you know, like that that's what poor people do. I don't want to do that, you know, like <laughs> it had this bad rep, like going yeah. on private servers. And then later, when retail started to crumble for me, I was like, all right, I, I want to go on a vanilla server now. You know, I want to go on the vanilla private server where the game is still good. Mm-hmm. And I went in with a feeling of, I guess it's going to be a bit nostalgic and stuff. And then the game was just much better than I realized because my memory of the game just got ruined a bit by, by the, you know, how the game progressed into awfulness. And... <laughs> It was better than I remember it. Like little things, like I, I level through wetlands, and at the end there is that kind of instance area, you know, like the elite mobs near the bridge, right? With quests that I can't do alone, and then I'm there, and I'm like two minutes later, some dude rolls up and he wants to help me out to do it, and you just make friends so much faster, and these people also level with you, and you keep running into them, and every single zone, you meet more people like that because you're forced, you're forced. To make friends all the time mm-hmm. and that's something i really miss now yeah yeah i think that's something that's really important i i know i dude actually the craziest thing happens and it's, it's only because of streaming but uh i i logged into wow the other day and i tapped swing in trade chat and so it's like oh a test fan you know mm-hmm. and i was like it was it was very uh it was very endearing it, it was very like endearing to me because I, 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 I used to get that a lot, like whenever I play on a private server, right? Because one, it was just like there was really one main server that people were playing on. And especially after I started streaming, like a lot of people knew who I was. But like even before, like I had made friends and stuff without streaming, you know? So it's like yeah. I would talk in trade chat and people would know who I am and, and you know, you'd, you'd go back and forth. But that's something that's even while I'm streaming on Retail Wow, that's still something that's so rare to type in trade chat and then like somebody like recognize you. I was just like, oh, like that's crazy yeah like, it's just kind of like a yeah weird, i used like, to always of... talk in trade chat man yeah the trade chat buddies like together be friends make it our girl annoy everyone else on the server that just wants to trade <laughs> <laughs> yeah man the best i think uh i i think with the, the this whole like trying to the mentality of trying to force players to play a certain way whether it's in uh, like a gameplay perspective, just like actual gameplay or like the social aspect or whatever, I think is not good. And, you know, they added that spam filter to the trade chat. Oh, that is something I, I really would. And this is this is something that is a concern, I think, if you're starting with the 735 client and downporting it. Mm-hmm. The spam filter for trade chat or public chat channels. Oh, dude, I would hate to see that. That, it's not like it works. It, well, it, it's it it kills chat. I mean, there, he's there's, talking about the the what is it like thirty seconds or what is it? I don't know what it is. If I type three, if I type three messages within like ten seconds, then it, it triggers a spam filter, and then I can't talk for like a minute. It mutes me, and it like it totally kill. Like I, I okay, I get it. Maybe I shouldn't be a spurg and just. Trr, 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 what like, if you need to sell don't more like it, things, you man? You. Yeah, That's exactly. Right. Just ignore you if you don't like it. Yeah, if they don't like it, just ignore me. Like that's fine. But like, the the spam filter, it's so just like, 
it, it, it's so it's it's oppressive. Like that's like that's how Fresh. it feels. Like I want to talk. Yeah. I want to. I want to like conversate. I want to. I want to communicate with people. Uh, and I like I can't do that in trade chat. Like I, I like every time I start talking in trade chat on retail, wow, I'm like okay. And then I get muted for a minute, and then I ADD kicks in. I forget. So I just I don't know spam filter ruin trade chat. Exactly. Exactly. So hey, so so they said something about which batch the game is starting at, right? Or what they want? They have a content release timeline. So right now. The, the idea they've floated is four content phases. So it's pretty uh -huh. much molten, molten core, Blackwing Layer, it's like, <laughs> or sorry, Molten Core, Nixia, Blackwing Layer, ZG, AQ, and the next, simply put. So, so my question there is can I get that fucking Palomino now? Can I get it? Can <laughs> I get the Palomino? That's a good question. You want to know something? Those items were, and they, they actually, th those original OG mounts were in the Classic WoW demo. That we played after BlizzCon, and they required unique uh, riding skills, like mechanic rider riding yeah. or horse riding. So yeah, well, I, I I I'm with you. I hope so. I hope they're there. I want that uh, Palomino, man. Yeah, we'll have to see. It's been teased for ten years. <laughs> yeah, I made it like I I worked oh, with ass. Blizzard a couple yeah. times when I was in Taiwan, and I made it this inside joke that whenever they wanted something of me, I was like, okay, okay, give me the Palomino, and. Uh, <laughs> They didn't want to give it, <laughs> so I guess there's some integrity, some integrity there, but uh, they didn't want to give me the Palomino man. So here's a question: If if they had actually said, "Okay, we'll give you," sorry, you fell away you, from you me there. Out. Yeah, sorry. Um, if they had said, "Okay, Civ, we'll give you a Palomino. Good job," would you have yeah. actually taken it? Oh hell yeah! Yeah, you would have. Okay. The Palomino <laughs> overrides all my uh, ethics. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, I would sell it on eBay. Yeah, it's just <laughs> like you get it and then you sell the account. <laughs> just like a complete bastard. <laughs> Dude, that was so bad. No, I think uh, <clears throat> I, I think kind of going go, we we you know we going back to BlizzCon a little. Bit. Let's let's reel it back a little bit. Um, you know, talked about like kind of what we uh, you know how, how you felt overall. I think that a lot of what was confirmed at BlizzCon was pretty good, but there's some things that. Uh, there's some things that they said they're not sure about, right? Like they talked about like loot trading, uh, like the loot mm -hmm. trading stuff that it is in retail. Wow, and uh, you know there were some talks about sharding. We kind of touched on sharding already with like the uh, population cap stuff, but um, yeah, there was that. And then the content release, they said there's going to be essentially like four patches instead of like eleven patches. Um, how do you I feel heard there about was something that? that they changed the loot, like how you loot things. They they yeah they kept kept the retail one. So, so basically with loot trading, what it is, is if you get an item, you have two hours to trade it. You can get a BOP yeah, item. I like it, yeah, I don't like that at all. Uh, I don't know if anybody does. Honestly, I, I don't think anybody. That I, I, I feel like of, the guy that is in my ignorant. dungeons that keeps my loot and it's like, oh, I'll trade it for you if you find something for me. Right. I feel like that guy likes it. I think he likes it. But I, I don't like that. Yeah, I honestly don't know. <laughs> Of anybody who's been a long time like fan of Classic WoW, who wants Classic WoW, that thinks that's a good idea, that likes that. I, I think a lot of people are really like, just like, you know, what the hell's going on? Uh, yeah, I, I think. I was going to say, their argument for doing it is to cut down on GM tickets and, you know, so GMs don't have to solve people's loot problems all day. Um, but if, if that's the problem, if that's the issue, their concern, I'd rather just have them say, you know what, if you give the. The, the loot to the wrong person or it, something goes wrong just tough tough luck that's just how it's going to be sorry yeah yeah I'd much rather fault that. or hire more gms you're a billion dollar company you can afford an extra they army just, of indian support you they know just got rid of like a hundred of them they're not going to do that yeah it's it's not a i don't i don't know if that one's going to work out unfortunately i don't think they're going to i i think like obviously like that that's something that seems the most reasonable thing to do but we know how that goes uh, <laughs> so I think the, I think the best case scenario is just to like, just, yeah, just, I mean, that, that's, that's kind of like a, I guess, selfish, like personal opinion of mine too, is like just personal, just, just, just personal responsibility. Like if you screw up, you screw up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, if you have a case of, if you're, if you're looking for a middle ground and I've said this, you know, uh, like I, I'm, I've, I've kind of been on this since BlizzCon, but if you want a middle ground, something that makes the most sense for what Blizzard wants to accomplish and what makes the most sense to kind of keep the integrity of the game as it is, at least only do it for master looting in like a raid environment. 
because that's the only time where it's like legitimately like somebody makes a mistake and and it it, it gets rid of like 90 percent of the abusive situations where somebody like needs it on a dungeon and they're like no i'm gonna hold it hostage or you go in with some friends you talk about your gnomergan run right you yeah. went to Nomergon with your two friends and like one's a priest and one's a rogue and you're a warrior, let's say, and then they just they roll on it, they win it and they just give it to you. So now you got three rolls instead of one versus however yeah. many else other people are in the group. So uh, I think it's something Their that's really, really not bad. having any friends. <laughs> it's, it's their fault. Why do I think I'm in the group by themselves? <laughs> no, no. I think uh, I, I think that's just the way that's that, that's just the way it should be is they should just not have anything at all. But uh but at least, at least, if if you want a middle ground, something that's the most reasonable, I think I think the uh, master loot in a raid environment is is the only thing that uh, right. the the only solution I can think of that that is probably something that they'll do. I want to <clears> change <throat> the topic. There's one thing I really like mm -hmm. in uh, Old War, mm -hmm. and um, I'm gonna reveal something uh, people will be sad about. But I was hunter. I play hunter, and um, one thing I really liked was the pet system, like. There was value. I'm, here I come with the value again. It's a recurring theme. I, I, there was a lot of value in your pet because you had to level it up. So if I have like the green Elwyn Forest trash spider, mm -hmm. even that would get value if I level that to 60 or, or you know, 70 later. Because people can tell I level that thing. And um, that makes it more than just an empty shell. It, it, it makes yeah. it this... Uh, Thing you can't just change exactly. and i missed that i thought that was awesome and it adds another layer of progression that's outside of race and, right. and yeah were... and it and it helps with the the class fantasy yeah class exactly. fantasy. yeah uh, one, one thing i liked <clears throat> about being hunter and classic is i would fill literally all my bags with ammo and then i would go shoot welflings until until all the bags are full with zero but with zero arrows <laughs> just empty all of them it takes like 10 hours actually no that would that's like two times it takes like four or five hours just shoot shoot them and uh so let me ask you, you, you sound like a crazy person <laughs> <laughs> just meticulously just i am not the shooting. same after emptying the wetlands <laughs> I've, I've never played Hunter, and I'm sure there are some Hunters <laughs> listening. Have you guys ever gotten set? I play Warlock, so if my demon dies, I'm like, whatever, I'll just summon a new cares. Whatever. But if, uh, if you're a Hunter and, you're, and your pet dies, have you ever gotten sad that your pet has died when you were younger? Or do you have any sort yeah, of like emotional because attachment? Some of them make really sad sounds <laughs> when they die. <laughs> you know? Uh, okay, there you go. That's, that's uh, it. Uh, warlocks, warlocks. I guess uh, are people. They like don't the care. The demon. They go. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think it's good. <laughs> I love when demons die, dude. Just banish them to hell, dude. Great. Yeah. The whelplings, <laughs> though, they. It's a satisfying sound when they die. <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Have you ever? Have you ever farmed back there? Uh, or have you ever? Um, have you ever gotten the uh, the 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 whelpling pet while while shooting those? Well, yes, that's that's how I make the money. Oh, okay, there you go. Yeah, that's I secret, consider dude. myself a well-playing uh, trader. Yeah, okay. And uh, that's also how I like to level. I grind the shit out of the well-plings of wetlands, level twenty-one to thirty-ish. Mm -hmm. Then I move on to the uh, the, the brown well-plings. Yeah, I, I, the the ones in uh, badlands. Yes, you're yeah. right. And and after that, <clears throat> there's like a couple levels where you can't kill well-plings, but then. The party starts again. You can go to the swamp of service and shoot the green ones. There you go. And those are worth even more money. And they're like next to a chest you can loot all the time. There you so, go. So, uh, yeah, big value. Yeah, dude, yeah. Well that's, I recommend that, it. That's exactly how I level, dude. That's, yeah, that's how you level? That's exactly oh, man, I how I level. I knew I recognized myself in you. It's the well playing <laughs> murder. But uh, <laughs> it's a great way to make money. And now we're going to start fresh, right? when when yeah. classic comes out mm -hmm. so i'm a bit confused how um how will i afford my mount because normally i kill the whelplings mm -hmm. i sell the whelpling to some rich level 60 and then i buy my mount right. but now there will be no rich level 60 i don't know how how i will that's, afford that that's mount. true at launch but late game you know give it a couple months i bet whelpling prices are going to be huge because there's going to be so many retail wow players uh -huh. and retail wow players love pets so to come over and they're going to buy the whelplings for a ton of gold right i th you know what i because I'm YouTuber, I, I think I will make commercial for having Welpling Pet. <laughs> nice. Like, they are the best. 
and re uh, get the seals up. <laughs> Good, good idea, good oh, idea. Go. Well, also you have the, um, uh, I, I can't remember the name of them. The red, they're like livers uh, for Dragon Breath Chili. Those sell really well. People want Dragon the Breath Chili. Sucks. Yeah, the flame sucks. Yeah, they, um, they, they, you want those for uh, for Dragon Breath Chili as well. So I, I used to go farm a lot of those, and they'll sell pretty well too. <clears throat> but I also um, like uh, grinding those turtles in the north south shore near the, 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 the lake with the little castle in it. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, the Lego little castle, and then there's that beach with all the turtles, and you shoot the turtles, and then you can also fish the fish that are in that lake. And the level 60 is needed because it's for the mana potion thing. Oh, okay, and that's uh, easy money. There you go, easy money. I'll be here all week. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> so, so you uh, did you always main a hunter? Has Hunter always been like your, yes. your main class? For, first, I but not well. First, I was dwarf hunter. Okay. And then I switched to dwarf female hunter. Well, of course. Yes. Of course. Why? Well, so, like, what, what? What was the? I mean, obviously, like you, you know, your Civ. You know, the, he's a big fan of the Jukes. Uh, the Fane Death Juke is, uh, you know, oh, yes. the, the early the early version of the LeBlanc Juke, of course. Can I but, say something <laughs> about Fane Death? Yeah, go ahead. There, I've been playing Hunter during. Uh, Draenor and Legion as well, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. And there's something I notice. I guess you didn't notice this because this is a European thing. Mm -hmm. We get grouped with Russians. Okay. And uh, they always fall for Fane Death. Always. <laughs> I could do it at half HP. They will be like, oh, he's dead. I will go over there every single time. Doesn't matter. Doesn't, like, doesn't matter how good or bad it is. It'll work. Nice. And it works for no one else. I, I don't know. It's true. It's true. I don't know is, why. Is a uh, like? Do you think it's just a coincidence? I choose not to answer this one. Okay, good idea. <laughs> but uh, it has, it has to be that, a there's one thing I'm hyped for in classic, which is I will level a uh, night elf priest, and I will call her the fast lift, and then I will stand next to the great lift in shadow mail, and. Uh -huh. Uh, mind control people. <laughs> <Legend. laughs> it's like a with, uh, the fast lift, yeah, yeah. and I will make a beautiful video of it with like a thousand times or something. Yeah. The fast lift. I think it's like such a great thing. I, yeah. I will do it. That that'd be really funny. Oh man, yeah. dude, I, that'd be so. I'm just thinking about how obnoxious that would be if somebody like you have a stealth priest just hops out of the shadows and just mind controls you and kills you. You're like, yes. you like don't even be level sixty. That'll be the best part. Make him like make her like level or him or her whatever. Uh, fifty nine. Yeah, like fifty nine. Yeah, exactly. It's because it's so BM. It's so BM yeah. if, if you're not level sixty. It, it'd be it's so. Like, I did next. I did next. And a... <laughs> yeah, it'd be so good, dude. <laughs> It'll be so funny. They don't know oh, what man. happens. They just see a whelpling, and they don't know there's someone stealth next. To <laughs> yeah, that'll be great. Like, what is this? <laughs> Come here. It's my bait. That'd be really good. That'd be really good. Yeah. <clears throat> so what you you uh, I, I think you told us this before we started the podcast. You said you played both NA servers and EU servers, like back in the yes. day when we first started playing. Yes. Tell us about yes, how you my started. Father, my father uh, was doing business in America, and he knew I played a shit ton of uh, Warcraft mm -hmm. two and three and stuff. And I was really hyped for WoW, and then he he bought me World Warcraft in America, mm -hmm. and I had no idea that. Uh, you know, there's different servers. I was just uh, some stupid kid. Mm -hmm. And so I go on Illidan, because Illidan is, is dope. So I go on that server and um, on launch. So I was very happy to be Wait, there on launch. You played Illidan Alliance or Illidan US? Yes. We played on the And same I made server. a Night of Warrior because they looked like Illidan on the box. That was yeah. a lie, by the way. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> Spawn with like a trash yeah. shield. Yeah, a little wooden but, shield. Uh, Anyway, month like um way later, I go to school, and I I meet this friend who plays WoW, and I'm like, yo, I'm an Illidan, and he's like, why the fuck are you on a French server? <laughs> like, what do you mean? It's not a French server. It's uh, uh, no one speaks French there. And then I learned that that I was on the American servers, so I rebought the game, and then I made my uh, hunter. Yeah. yeah. There you go. How how yeah. long did you play NA servers? I I, I wouldn't know, man. Yeah. Uh, you could probably calculate it. Like it was like Thanksgiving launch, right? Uh huh. And then uh, you get summer, and then start of the school year. So that's yeah. quite a while. 
but I would just make like characters until level 20 and then make yeah. a new one all the time back then, you know? Dude, because so whenever I started playing, I started playing Illidan Alliance US. It's yeah. so crazy to think that we might have possibly like actually like crossed paths at some point, like way back then. And like we had no idea. Right. That would be dope. Yeah, that's crazy. Maybe uh, my ninja looted your shit. Yeah, you probably did, actually. Maybe. Uh, you probably. Like, I sold you a plane. Well, you know what you might have done? You might have been a hunter trying to take a, a, a paladin weapon away from me. I don't know why anybody would ever, you know, take a, take a weapon away from another class. But uh, I was wondering who killed that dog I was trying to tame. <laughs> He was special. Uh, uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. <clears throat> but um, but yeah. So so you started playing there, and then you went to the EU servers. And yes. when did, when did you quit WoW? Um, I quit WoW first when uh, Raf launched. Okay. Because uh, I was like, not my WoW. Quit. Bam. Right. And uh, I was actually the biggest PvP guild leader of my server on EU, Katgar, mm -hmm. uh, during TBC. And then I was just, I was annoyed at Raf, even though I know it's like considered popular and successful, but I was like, I, I didn't like it. Yeah, I was, uh, the, same way. I was the same way. In hindsight, sure. it wasn't yeah. that bad. It wasn't that bad. Yeah. But I, 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 I've always been like a bit of a perfectionist and I felt like the game was not going in the direction I wanted it to go with the flying and the portals and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, I got mad at it. But I mean, even during Raf, I came back. So I, I was obviously uh, missing it. And mm -hmm. I still enjoyed it. That's actually when I switched to Dwarf Female. So I consider it a success. There you go. That's one of you female. made the transition. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, go ahead, Tips. Uh, I was going to say, it's crazy how loved Wrath is today. But back in 2008, 2009, people, like, especially towards ICC, like, people hated Wrath. Like, during TOC, Trial of the Crusader. That like I discovered yeah. private servers because of how much people hated rap. I, I, I think what happened is that WoW has always, from day one, just gradually got worse. <laughs> and <laughs> but during classic at TBC, it was still really good. So it had it was g still gaining players. Yeah. And then during RAF, naturally, it had the most players because everything before that was super good. But right. you know, well, it just had the most players, and that's why it's the most popular. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though, you know, after, and after that still, WoW kept getting worse. So people remember it as the best WoW ever was in their memory because that's right. where they started. That's yeah. what I think happened. I, I, I totally agree. If you look at the population chart, like it's, you know, you've got a big population gain and then it peaks in Wrath. I think it goes up from like 12 to like 12 and a half in Wrath. I think what yeah. happened was a lot of people uh, ended up quitting, right? A lot of people who had played in early vanilla Burning Crusade ended up quitting like you and me. We both quit like around the beginning of Wrath. And then there was so much hype around WoW because it had been this big game for like five years or so at that point. Mm -hmm. And people are like, well, what's this game about, right? So people start playing WoW. So you have a new player base coming in and it's almost like it's it's like churning the barrel, right? So people people are like falling out of the bottom and people being added to the top. Yeah. So you've got this case of the population might have gone up a little bit, but in terms mm -hmm. of like uh, player retention, like maybe the retention wasn't quite there, right? I see the chat releasing about TBC. I love to talk about that. Yeah. I feel like you guys talk, probably talk about it a million times, but this is new to me. Yeah. But uh, I, I feel like TBC, it still carried all the great things from Vanilla over. You know, the, the value in professions. The And it was only the first time that there were 10 extra levels, you know. Mm -hmm. So uh, it wasn't that deluding the old stuff yet. And I think TBC was great because it carried over all of Vanilla's greatness. But it also started seeding the shitty shit, shitty things in, you know, like right. oh, flying mounts, portal cities, this, that, right. that's a great idea. And, and the, the, the core concepts of adding 10 extra levels as an expansion, that's not an expansion, that's a, that's a replacement. You know, you just made everything irrelevant, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, I think the core of all those things was a bad idea. Yeah. And, uh, but it was still a fun expansion. It was just rare things started to go in the wrong direction, even though it was still mm -hmm. fun. I think so, uh, uh, I would rather play vanilla than TV Steam because it's like, yeah, I think uh, split. <laughs> I think with a lot of the, the stuff with burning crusade versus classic, the way I see it, I think the end game of burning crusade, uh, maybe was better. That's, that's what I think. Maybe just a little bit. I like the end game. Like you have arenas mm -hmm. added in now and, uh, the rating scene was a little bit more, um, uh, 
they, they kind of tightened it down a little bit. Yeah, a little bit more established. Yeah, yeah that's a good way of putting it. Uh, but yeah, no, as, I think as far a lot as of looking at the game better. holistically, right? Looking at it from start to finish, I, I think classics, the early game of it, is is so good, and then whenever Burning Crusade yeah. comes out, that stuff kind of gets diminished, right? The, the, the problem is is if you when you have classic, you have like a full, complete, great game. And mm -hmm. after that, every expansion, they add something great and they add some shitty things and they 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 don't they, they keep all the shitty things. They don't clean right. up after themselves, you right. know. And uh, but still, on top of that, I think adding levels every expansion was a bad idea. Mm -hmm. Do you uh, you, do well, you play RuneScape, Siv? Sorry, man. I didn't. No, nah, because um, like I said, uh, I, I got into WoW when it came out. And in my country, Netherlands, around that time is where Runes came, came popular. And I was like, fuck that, I'm playing wow, like this is way better. <laughs> you know, was that free? free. Yeah, yeah. You don't have dads paying, paying for you for a monthly service? <laughs> well, so I, yeah, I, I, I was in wow. Yeah, no, I didn't play RuneScape. Uh, yeah. But I, I do hear a lot of people talk great about it. So, you know, I, I do think it must have been fun. Yeah. Well, I, it's funny, you know, you talking about the whole, like, every 10 levels kind of invalidates content. RuneScape, it's one of the best things RuneScape has ever done was always keeping content relevant and always having a very long progression tail. Like, RuneScape, they didn't increase the level cap for, like, yeah. 15 years. Like, no, that's what years. you do. That is yeah. what you do. Uh, I think if we're looking at what are they going to do with Classic, you know, are they going to expand on Classic? My first vote would be like, hell no, Blizzard isn't good enough to do that. They would fuck it up. But if I were to do it, I, I, I would still add maybe the Blood Elves, stuff like that. You can add that. You can add that stuff. It doesn't ruin the game. It doesn't uh, make all the end game irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And like what RuneScape does is instead of just like adding only, you know, max level content, they also add content within like certain level ranges. So in reality, in RuneScape, there isn't just like one, you know, type of content to pursue one finish line. There's a there's like dozens of different finish lines, because if you don't if you don't like playing at max level, you know, it's kind of like having a twink and wow, you can PK at like, you know, right. level 30 or something like that. And there's right. so many different builds and every single level range has a different meta. There's different items. There's different, you know, special yeah. attacks. There's different ways to play the game. So it feels fresh on so many different levels. I think you'd like it a lot. basically. Ah, that's good. No, yeah, I, I liked that in uh, WoW, that that I would just go into a better ground at level 30 and enjoy the great weapons I managed to find for that level, you know? Mm -hmm. Take your time. That's what it's about. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that's... I feel like the way in classic professions and all those things tied together uh, has never been uh, repeated. Even in TBC, you know, things don't tie together as well. And... Um, I think you can't do that if you if you try to replace content. Mm -hmm. Yeah, TBC was close. I think I think with a lot of the mistakes they made with amount stuff like that, things. Um, you cutting out again? Am I cutting out? Sorry. I th I think. Am I good? Yeah. That's fine. Little... You could also like fill the void with like your own words. <laughs> yeah, I'll just jump in real quick. <laughs> Finish my sentence for me. Yeah. I, was say, I think with a lot of the mistakes they made in TBC, flying mounts, other things like that. Um, I think that their intentions were still really good. They just didn't really foresee the negative ramifications of those things. Like, it's really easy to understand right. how you could think, okay, from a development point of view, flying yeah. mounts, you can design new terrain that's going to be cool, caves up on top of mountains, you can have floating islands and crazy stuff like that, floating dungeons. But it's it's really easy to look at the cool positives of that and then overlook the negatives. Right. And now, now I think we're at a point where they're doing these things not out of ignorance. I think they're just, they've shifted their target demographic so much that they, they don't even care about when when they're developing retail out, I genuinely don't think they're considering our demographic. Mm -hmm. I think I think their priorities have shifted so much. Yeah, I, I saw an interesting question in the chat. Someone asked me if I thought if I think arenas was a mistake. Uh, <laughs> well, I I think arenas were very fun. Of course, I think everyone thought they were fun, uh, but I do think they could have been better. Uh, I love game design, and one of my opinions in game design is always that. Uh, a combat system is not enough like you need to offer something extra uh mm -hmm. which is why you know league of legends and dota b uh you know battle right or you know heroes of the storm which is basically just better right pretending to be lol but um mm -hmm. 
yeah, combat system is not enough. And and what I would have liked to see is maybe better grounds for slightly less people, like five or seven people, better grounds, grand, mm. rather than arena. Because, um, yeah, I, I think you should always offer a game mode. Right, for like for, for different uh, types of players, like people want to do small man content. Yeah. The, the thing is, if, if you just have the combat system, mm -hmm. you master the chess piece, but then you don't get to play chess, you know? Mm-hmm. And if if you add the combat, if you add a game mode, you can infinitely get better at it. Right. I see what you're saying. Was it Arena Season 1 where in order to queue for arenas, you actually had to go to the... Like, th there weren't Arena Masters in Shatrath or Major Towns. You actually had to go to the to queue. And so I remember there being... And then maybe they added them in Season 2 or Season 3. I don't think it was like that in Season 1, though. I think you actually had to go to the, to the actual arena. So I remember... Anyway, yeah. I remember there being tons of... PvP around the arena masters, like in the in the Grand Arena, which was badass because you're PvPing out of the arena, right. and like you, if you die, you might miss your Q, and like it, it was a pain in the ass, but it was also like so cool, also. Well, but, it, it felt like, I mean, you're you're doing arenas, right? You're going for Gladiator. It, it felt like Bloodsport, <laughs> like, yeah. like you know what I mean, yeah. and and that's like kind of going back to the concept of class fantasy. Um, I mean, it's the same thing, right? It's just it's not class fantasy, but it's it's like it's RP, right? It's it's role play, like that's it's you're playing a role playing game. That's what you want to see. Um, <clears throat> I think with um, I I think the concept of like having more like small man content or uh, just different types of content in general, I think I think is probably uh, that's something that probably would have been cool. I think that it could get to the point like if you start doing too many. Um, if you start doing too many things, right, breaking it down too much, then you end up. Uh, <clears throat> basically it, it's it you divide the player base so much that there's like people who only want to queue for this or only want to queue for that uh and then right. it ends up being not as much now you're um, afraid it will like inflate the market with too much stuff yeah i, I think you find buddies to yeah do what you want to do yeah pretty much um i think it's cool i think it's cool but like you'd, you'd have they'd have to find a way to like find a medium if there's if it's small enough queues right let's say Let's say they they had five they had five v five they had three v three and they had two v two but if they had like five yeah. man uh, like let's say a five man battleground or something as well on top of five v five like that wouldn't be so bad on its own but if no, they had like a I, whole I, bunch it's of a things, problem that really is very really recurring in games mm -hmm. where they add too many game modes like right now I've I've been playing some uh, Black Ops four mm -hmm. and they've got like a billion billion game modes mm -hmm. and half of them you you will never find a fucking game right everybody's you know, doing the hardcore and and one thing that you could do against that, mm -hmm. which I think is pretty cool, Splatoon did it, is you just put a schedule. At this time, you can do these two things. At right. this time, you can do these two things. And then you can be like, and in my experience, it's less of a, ah, oh, shit, right now it's this game mode, and I don't like that. And in my experience, it's more like, oh, wow, in half an hour, it's this. Let's go for it. You know, like more exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and I think... That is a fix you need to do if you choose to have a billion game modes. Like, you have to maybe sometimes uh, schedule them a little yeah. bit. League of Legends does this too now with their, with their like, weird game modes. Have you seen this? I, I, oh, yeah. They do, you like... Mean they just sometimes offer a special game mode? Yeah, they, they, have, yeah. Like a, they have, like, a cycling... Uh, I don't know what they call it, but, like, it'll be, like, like ultimate rapid fire will be one. Where they'll go right. through and it's like like yeah. ninety percent cooldown reduction, no mana cost, and just it's it's like Spurg mode, right? But that like that's like, yeah, that's like yeah, that's like one game mode. So like they they cycle through game modes where it's like this will be a game mode for like three or four days, and then they'll put in another game mode and they just go through and through. Retail Wow actually does this too with the brawls. I mean, all I need is Ultra Valley, and I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> but they well, the, the first thing when Civ brought this up, the first thing I thought uh -huh. of were the uh, what are they called? What are they called? The new, um, like, like, Ultra, or, or, oh, fuck. Or at the Highlands in Dark Shore, what are those called? Um, yeah, the Brawls, the Brawls, yeah. No, the no, brawls. Those, no, not Brawls, they're not Brawls. Um, maybe, maybe someone in the chat. Uh, Warfronts, Warfronts, yeah. Oh. And uh, I, I actually freaking hate it. I hate it. Like, if I want to do a Warfront, yeah. I want to do a Warfront. I don't have to wait seven I, days to go do a Warfront, you know? I but that, that is a bit crazy. The, the rotation should be, if you have, like, three different things, they rotate every hour. Oh, you so think it should like, be that like fast? Super, super fast transitions, yeah. Yes, or extremely rotations. fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that, no, so at least you can do it every day. Like, that. like if they if they had done something to where it's like, the like one day 
you have wharf runs available in the morning and then the next day they're available in the af- in the evening or afternoon or whatever and that rotates yeah, yeah. i don't know I, I i i really haven't thought too much about that kind of stuff to be honest I, i'm i'm pretty uh I'm not completely, but I'm I'm fairly checked out of retail WoW right now. I think I, I might get back into it a little bit whenever the new raid comes out. Because uh, well, this is a conversation we were having. Stay safe. Is the the raid content in the game isn't necessarily something that's bad. You know, it's it's not like <laughs> just yeah. yeah it's just the like review of BFA. The yeah. raid content isn't necessarily. It's bad. it's not necessarily bad. It's just you don't it's have. Fine. It's everything else around it that makes it kind of <laughs> like you know. I do I really want to do this? That's that's the problem. Um, They've stripped away all the incentives to raid. Yeah, and it's like, just yeah. like you don't have you don't have your items you, you, like the specific items that you want. There's there's very few of them, I should say. Like it's the value we talked about. It's the same thing, exactly. There, it's, there, it's the there is zero thing. value in in all of that stuff. Exactly, like in in vanilla, okay, in vanilla, you have so many incentives to raid. Number one, to see the content, to actually see it. That mm-hmm. was taken away when LFR was put into the game because now you can see the content whenever you want. You know, it's it's right there yes. in front of you. Number two, to get the best gear, all right? You can't even get the best gear in raids anymore because most of the stuff is in Mythic Plus. Number three, to be able to get the coolest looking gear because back in vanilla, most of the coolest looking items typically were the tier sets. Yes. Well, it's not all classes use tier sets, but a lot of the best looking gear happened to be the best gear in the game. Nowadays, you have transmog, so that gets rid of that incentive too. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's like there's like no one's... Why would you raid? I mean, even the story elements. There used to be story elements in raids. Now the story elements are outside the raids. So... The only reason you should mythic raid is if you really, really, really like mythic raiding. But then your love for mythic raiding has to be so great that you're willing to put up with all the crap and all the commitment required yeah. mm-hmm. to mythic raid for just that incentive, which just isn't enough. You're absolutely right. I, I think for a lot of people, just just the desire to be inside of a raid, be inside the action, go inside and just look around and, and j- just to be in the raid is a huge motive. For us and get and get inside of it. I remember this is a Burning Crusade story. I was like, uh, so my guild ended up clearing all of Black Temple, but uh, when Black Temple first came out, I was I was like so eager to just get inside, and my guild wasn't quite ready to go in. I wanted to know what it looked like, like what what did Illidan look like? What were the bosses? What did they look like? And there weren't really really many screenshots back then. And then uh, this is the the beginning era of YouTube. I found a video of a guy who did a full black. It had like 17 views. He had a full black temple run and it was like sped up like 10 times it was like a two and a half hour run a full black temple and it was super fast and i, I would watch that video like every night because i was so fascinated by black temple i just want to look inside of it and yeah I, I, I could pretend i was there i could and it would be and then when you did me. it you were like wow we suck that guy did it way faster <laughs> yeah. it, it motivated me because i wanted to go in and see it and right if i if i could have just queued lfr the like Humans are lazy. Humans will take the path of least resistance. I would have just done LFR, and I would have—I never would have done normal or heroic or mythic. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. More lazy. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And like even it's like out, just mentioned yeah. the the story, and that made me think about something from the story in BFA. I don't know. Can we talk about the story from launch BFA? Is that or is that that's not spoiler anymore, right? Uh, like that. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's fine. Like we, we can talk about it a little. I bit, think yeah. it's fine, right? I, I gave the call out, guys. This is from launch ish. Yeah. I, I did that quest where you save Jaina, who's on the fucking island. So you take her fucking mom and you go to the island, right? Uh-huh. And after all this effort, I find Jaina and she teleports us out. Yeah. I was very upset about that. Yeah. It's like, wait a second. How come you can't just pour it? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think it's uh, to me, I I've got a like I, I've I've lost. I think whatever your criticism, criticism can come what? from so criticism criticism can come from multiple places. I'm I'm like, I have, I lost my voice, so I'm kind of struggling a little bit. <clears throat> uh-huh. But criticism can come from multiple places, and there's two types, right? There's criticism criticism that comes from being a hater, right? And there's mm-hmm. criticism that comes from like you know wanting the game to be good right being passionate about any subject so yes. <clears throat> that's something that i think a lot of times people uh people have a hard time both differentiating between the two from the standpoint of critique uh and mm-hmm. sometimes differentiating between the two uh from somebody who's you know watching or listening or whatever um from the audience perspective i think yes. that uh 
for me, I've kind of lost that a little bit. Uh, like, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not checked into the story of BFA so much. I, uh, I'm kind of just like, whatever, I do it, I play it, like, you know, for yeah. gameplay, Omega LOL, yeah. Um, but, I mean, that's the thing, like, I only like arenas, pretty much. And, and I'm, not in a, I'm not in a raiding guild. Like I said, I'll probably, I'll probably kick around the new raid a little bit whenever it comes out. And, you know, it'll, it'll be fun for maybe a few weeks. But uh, I, I like to do arenas. That's, like, the main thing I like to do in Retail WoW. But um, as far as, like, the story goes, like, whenever there's something that happens that, like, may seem kind of stupid, I'm just kind of like, well, whatever, you know. But yeah, it's it, it's just because I've I, I lost kind of, like, the, the passion for it, right? I've lost the passion for, like, following the story and seeing, up. like, what happens. Yeah. But, like, uh, like, Burning Crusade, on the other hand, like, I... <clears throat> I, I didn't play Warcraft 3. I didn't play through Warcraft 3 before WoW. But okay. I, I knew a lot of the characters. right? I, I knew who Illidan was. I knew who Kael'thas was. Uh, I, I knew um, I, I knew some of like the... Actually, did I? I knew a little bit about like Lady Vosh and stuff. But I, I didn't know so much about it. Uh, I, but I knew I knew a lot more about Illidan and stuff. I mean, I picked Illidan's server. So uh, in Burning Crusade versus Classic... Classic had like Rag and Nefarian and uh, yes and Cthulhu and, and uh, eventually Kelthazad. I guess Kelthazad would have been the only boss that, from as far as I know, from what I've played Can I Warcraft. Can say something 3. about that? Huh? Can I say something about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah go ahead. I really like how in uh, Vanilla, the story there is no fucking story. It's like this is the world, and these yes. are bosses that are just in the world, and. That's why it's a real, and I don't like how after that they well, force this like story every expansion, like uh, instead of just accepting that it's a world where a lot of shit. Right. Happens. Well, like the the story yeah. is there, but like the story is like the story like started in WoW, like it's like stuff that people are piecing together. Like it's almost like a a, a prelude a little bit in some sense, right? Like whenever you're talking uh -huh. about old gods and stuff like that, because that's not something that really happened in Warcraft three, right? Um. But then whenever you get to Burning Crusade and it's like now you're fighting Kael'thas and Lady Vash and Vosh or whatever, however you pronounce it. And uh, then you get to Illidan. Like, that's just like the most badass thing in the world. Right. Yes. Um, and then eventually, like, it kind of comes to a head whenever you kill Arthas in ICC. And that's why for a lot of people, like a lot of people feel like um, a lot of people feel like the game ended for them at the end of Wrath. Because at the end of the original trilogy, you've killed like a lot of the major bosses inside the Warcraft yeah. games. And <clears throat> then at that point, it's just kind of like, okay, now it feels like they're just kind of like making up the story from now on. That's how a lot of people felt. Yeah. It feels Absolutely. like fan, fan art. Fan, uh, fan what's that called? Fan yeah. fiction. Yeah. Fan fiction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, and, and I totally agree with you, Siv. Like, I feel like in Vanilla, there was lore, but no story. And yes. then... Basically, you had you had the world, you had all the characters, you had small stories in every single zone, every single village, every single area. Yeah. But there was no primary narrative that overshadowed your own story. Yeah, your and that makes it feel like this big free MMO where you're just whatever you want to be mm -hmm. better than, oh, you have to go save Jaina. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to save Jaina. I just don't want to do my thing. <laughs> I, just, I just don't want to. <laughs> and she can teleport out anyway, apparently. Yeah. Do you, exactly, uh, exactly. what, what do you think would be a better solution? Uh, cause I, I do think this, like at a certain point they are going to have to make up story, right? Unless they come out with Warcraft four, you know? Mm -hmm. And then I don't think they're going to do a Warcraft four before world of Warcraft is over. Because if they want to have a different storyline in the Warcraft games in the world of Warcraft games, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Right. Cause the whole point of world of Warcraft was to like carry on the storyline of the Warcraft games. Yeah. Um, no, I, I think, uh, with story, it's like. When we went from Warcraft 2 to Warcraft 3, they made up new shit, right? Mm -hmm. They made up new bosses, they made up new stuff, and that's exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think that's just what they should have kept doing. Like, give me something new. Don't I don't want to kill Gul'dan again. I want to, I want to like see some new shit, like something I've never heard of, like right. some crazy new boss. Okay. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if they just have worse writers, or I'm not gonna attribute to that i'm gonna say that i think mmos are just an objectively worse medium to tell a story than an rts i think rts's are very very good ways to tell stories and it, it's hard it's hard to have a good story and yeah, build right. it properly with the characters in an mmo maybe exactly. it's more that it was a single player game where right? you're playing characters in a story and in mm -hmm. mmo you're not doing that exactly yeah. and like in an mmo the, the whole idea behind an mmo is to prolong the content make the content long you have various patches over three, six months period, etc. Imagine going to watch a movie and you watch 
30 minutes of the movie and then you gotta leave for six months and then come back watch the next 36 you know 30 minutes of the movie and then you, 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 you mean get adventures lost. <laughs> yeah <laughs> well, like you know what i mean but like like imagine having a story split up so much mm -hmm. that like there's just no means of being able to see the whole thing and not only just over time but also split up across different zones what if you don't finish the story in zone a all of a sudden the story in zone b doesn't make sense and stuff like that it, it just there's no there's no consistency and i think like yeah. like stacy said mmo's horrible 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 uh, type of game to, to center a story around. Yeah, yeah. just don't force the story. Stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I agree. Exactly. Yeah, it uh, needs to be a world. Mm -hmm. Of exactly. Warcraft. Of Warcraft. <laughs> hey, uh, real quick, uh, just to interject. Uh, guys, we are going to do like Q&A a little bit after this. Uh, like toward, towards the end of the podcast, we're going to do Q&A. If you guys want to tweet at us with hashtag ClassicCast, that's, that's usually the first thing we look at is, is Twitter. Um, you know, tweet at SFAN at Tips Out Baby, or SFAN TV. Sorry, I don't even know my own name. Tips Out Baby, Civ HD tweets, or Stay Safe Warlock. And then uh, put hashtag ClassicCast on it. That's what I'll be searching for. Uh, and I'll go through and I'll look at some of the questions there. And then we'll also pick out some... Uh, We'll pick out some questions for Chad if you guys have any questions for Civ or anything like that. Uh, not right away, but but here in a few minutes. If you guys want to go ahead and start thinking of some questions or um, or, or just kind of getting prepared for it, I guess. So I just want to go ahead and let you guys know. Uh, also, if you guys haven't uh, followed Tips Out Baby, Stay Safe TV, and Civ HD on Twitch and uh, YouTube as well. And, and uh, S1 TV. Yes, and myself and myself as well. Thank you, thank you. Um, <laughs> So yeah, if you guys haven't done that yet, uh, we we would all appreciate it if you guys uh, if you guys do that. So, <clears throat> so um, with uh, well, like talk, kind of going back and talking more about like the design of the game and storytelling. Circle jerking more about the classic. Yeah, let's just yeah, let's just keep doing that. This is great. <laughs> well, actually, no, like let's uh, more specifically kind of talking about like the the medium of an RTS versus a uh, versus an MMO. A lot of times, okay. whenever I'm playing an RTS, it's like. Uh, I feel like, you know, they have the cutscenes in between. It's kind of like this is happening. You're watching this. Either it's like a like a game cutscene or like a cinematic or whatever. Just, it feels just like I'm by reading the way, a book. Real quick, uh, RTS ahead. means real time strategy. I think maybe a lot of younger people don't know what RTS is. Well, the young there's the young not, folks. There's not been a popular RTS in a long time. They're actually yeah. <laughs> real time strategy. Warcraft two, Warcraft three, Starcraft. Anyway, sorry. Mm -hmm. it, it's, it's almost like Fortnite like... from above. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like four and ever above exactly. So, with an RTS, you, it's almost like you're reading a book, or really, I guess, more like watching a movie. And then all of a sudden, like the movie is put on pause, and then it's like, okay, now you now you play this part out. And I, I think it's very like as far as like a, a, a personal investment, like getting emotionally invested into a game, uh, and, and understanding the story that the uh, that the game wants to try to convey to you. I, I just think it's really really effective. Uh, I, I would say that, from a storytelling perspective, it's it's probably one of the better mediums, just in general. <clears throat> I agree. Yeah, rather than you know playing as your own avatar, you're playing as the heroes of the game or commanding you know armies of a of an empire in the game. Mm -hmm. Much yeah. that's much more effective at getting getting a story across than right. sort of playing playing as a hero or an adventurer and taking part in these epic things. I think RTSs are are just way better for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this might this might be a little bit off topic. I, I, it's not that off topic, but I, I, I personally really hate playing story games, which is why I like, wow, I hate when there's a story, because when there's a story, especially if it's linear, uh, I feel forced to keep playing. I feel like I get anxious, like I want to know what happens. And if I'm watching a movie, I can't do anything about it. So I just got to watch. <laughs> you sit there and let it happen to you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but when I'm playing games, like I, I, I got to make it happen. So yeah. I, I hate that. I really avoid story games. You know, that's mm -hmm. why I didn't buy like God of War, all those games. I'm like, I, I, I'll get anxious to rush through it. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if a lot of people have that, but uh, you want to know it's, it's weird, it's... man. I, I agree. I, I've, I've, I don't know if you've done this. I've watched a lot of YouTube videos explaining lore for games that I've never even played. The other day, I listened to like eight hours of Warhammer 40k lore. I've never played Warhammer. I don't never play. I don't know. I, I, <laughs> I, I, I'd rather Dude. watch a video of how someone. They already explained it to me, then play it myself. Okay, I, I don't feel so thing. weird anymore now. Well, yeah. I, do this. I never played Halo 4, dude. Never played Halo 4. Just watch the whole story on freaking YouTube. Dude. <laughs> so, yeah. 
for me, it's, it's just easier. <laughs> for me, I uh, I think a lot of people were like this. A lot of people who played WoW or a lot of people who played WoW growing up pretty much played WoW. Like they didn't really play a whole lot of other games because they spent so much of their time just running around in WoW and doing WoW things. Uh, that's what the case was for me before it. Dark Age of Camelot. Afterwards, it was League of Legends. That's that's basically what I did. So like now going back through and like you know like doing the Dark Souls right, doing doing the Dark Souls games and doing like story games now. I, I kind of am trying to like get that out of the way because I had like friends in school who like they all played Mass Effect and Bioshock and Skyrim and this and that and I like. You know, I was the big gamer, but I didn't play any of the games yeah. that they played. You know, like I was known yeah. for being like a big gamer. And then all of a sudden, like I didn't play the games that yeah. everybody else was playing. So um, I kind of I'm taking the time to, to go back through and, and get to play all that. And mm. I, dude, I been, saw someone ask fun. about like Dark Souls, mm -hmm. like if I would feel the same about Dark Souls. But no, like I consider Dark Souls like a very <clears throat> difficult arcade game. You know what I mean? Like it's a challenge after challenge after challenge. Mm hmm. And I don't think anyone cares about story in Dark Souls, right? Like that's not what you're playing for. That's just like background environment. I think you know? exactly. I, I think yeah. with Dark Souls, like the story is there, and there's people that care about the story, but it's not like it's not like forced on you. It's like if you really want the story, like you can go figure it out, or you can kind of piece it together, right? But as far as like I think you saying of it, like you explaining it as in, like it's basically like an arcade game, like a really like fleshed out arcade game. It is kind of like that because it's very action based. Yeah. So. It's like vanilla, dude. The, the sto there is some story out there. There's stories, but <clears throat> unless, you know, you don't have to go out and seek it. And the great thing about yeah. that is it allows you to fill in the gaps of the story with your own idea of the story. Like yes. Dark Souls, there's a really popular Dark Souls YouTuber out there named like Vati Vidya or something like that. Yeah. He does like all of the Dark Souls YouTube lore stories. Mm -hmm. The thing about him, though, is that he he actually like inserts some of his own theories into the story itself and he just takes bits and pieces of the story that he sees and he kind of fills in the gaps on his own which makes it so interesting but if you watch him versus another dark souls lore youtuber you'll notice the story is a little bit different between them because mm -hmm. it's a very effective way of storytelling they've only put some bits and pieces of the lore in the games and then it's up to you to kind of figure out what the rest of the world is yeah. all about. And that's that's personally what I like. Like, if, if if the lore for me needs to be nothing more than background environment to make me feel cozy like shit's going on. And mm -hmm. uh, I understand for a lot of people, deep lore and story is important. And I don't mind if it's there for them. Just don't don't make me read it. Like, just let me <laughs> see it on the background as I run the other direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and it's just like different different types of games for different types of people. I think uh, I, that's kind of the reason why I think Dark Souls is uh, for for somebody who's streaming WoW. I think Dark Souls is a very natural transition into doing kind of more variety games and whatnot because it's very action based and it's still an RPG. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of RPGs are more story based, and uh, like if you're if you're that type of player who's like more into like the action and stuff, it might be like a, a smoother transition going from like wow to dark souls to then playing some other rpgs and stuff on stream because i i personally like I, I enjoy rpgs but i'm also very people know this from watching my stream i'm very add and like i just like i can't keep my eyes off the chat i'm always looking at it um but i i think that's i i just think dark souls is, is an easy thing because if something's going on there's a cinematic or something I always immediately turn around and I'm and I'm looking at the chat and then I miss something that happened on the screen. I'm like, oh crap, right. you know. So I think playing Dark Souls first is kind of like a something that you kind of naturally get more used to. Like, oh, I have to pay attention here. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, I thought this stream was about WoW Classic, man. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know, I know. <laughs> well, that's and that's the thing. Kind of like we'll we'll go into all kinds of stuff, right? Like talking about uh, talking about like old gaming and stuff. Right, but, uh, but that's I'm not familiar nice. with what uh, tips and stay safe uh, mained. Like, what classes did you play? Mm -hmm. In vanilla? Yeah. Um, I play a warrior, but back in original vanilla, my main was an undead warlock. Warlock, right. Undead shoot. warlock? Yeah. That's a bit oh, edgy, man. Geez. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> the first character I ever made in vanilla WoW, this is back in November, whatever, 2005, uh, 2000, 2004. Um... Was it was a night elf rogue? I made a male night elf rogue with like the sick pointed hair, and I got dueled at level ten, and I thought it was badass. And then I got to like mm -hmm. level twelve, and I was like, okay, this is stupid, because I was eleven, so I was like, yes, yeah, so that's what everyone does. It, or it did the same thing to you. Boy. You saw Illidan on the box. You're like, oh, exactly. Shit. I had to just go be a night elf and stab stuff, and then I and then I made a, a, a no mage, 
I made a name. No, uh, a, mage. A, a mage, yeah. But now I play Warlock. I'm a Warlock gamer now. Mm -hmm. I, like I feel like the Horde. Too. I feel like the Horde. Like, like on Alliance, all the races were represented. Like, people play all four of their races. And on Horde, maybe I shouldn't be rude. Maybe I should. <laughs> I feel like, it's my opinion, don't yeah. hate Asphalt for this. I feel like Horde, in, back in vanilla, so not anymore now, mm -hmm. okay? But back in vanilla, I felt like Orcs were all neckbeards. And then Undead was like the edgy kids at school. True. Okay? True. And then Trolls didn't exist. And then Torrents <laughs> level until level 20 and then switch to Alliance. Right. No, that's true. 100% true. That's, that's how I feel true. about Horde in vanilla. Like It's true, actually. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, well, dude, it's like, uh, of course, all the all the neckbeards are gonna play orc because they're, the, they're the best horde race, dude. You get the stun resist, you're good to go. <clears throat> true. No, no, I'm, true. I'm, uh, yeah. I don't know. I was so young. I don't know how many people when they're making their first vanilla 2004, 2005. How many of them are like, hmm, this racial does this, and this is 20 percent stun resistance. Like, how many? And oh, this this frost resistance is gonna benefit me here. Like, I, I doubt people. Did people care about that? I was just too young to even know. It was like this. Horde was the cool faction. Alliance were the kitties. That's what I remember back in the day. Like, no, that, here's that what I here's what I remember. That sounds remember... like something edgy kids would say at school. Those... <laughs> <laughs> I remember you know? literally yeah. everybody who played Alliance said that everybody who plays Alliance is kids, and all the Horde has like the the you know the adults, the mature people. And then I I, I went and I was like playing on a Horde server for a little bit, and everybody on the Horde side, well, all the kids want to play horde and all the adults are playing alliance like this like they're yeah. you know they're they're adults right they it, want, it's they the call of duty effect another. right where the kids yeah. start playing call of duty and the adults start playing the cute games yeah well it just it yeah. doesn't make any sense like it's it's just like I, I feel like each side thinks that all the kids are playing on their side and it's like well at the end of the day maybe just everybody sucks like, like at the end of the day i know losing and sucking somehow yeah. at the end of the day i know what side i want to be on in alter valley i want to be on the side with the ball neck bridge yeah. That's all I care about. Need in the uh, dude, this, get your hard pack also, snowballs. The same thing is true with BGs. It's been like this, like every BG I've ever been in. You queue a random BG, uh, you're on Alliance, and everyone in the BG is like, "Oh man, Horde wins all the BG. Horde is way better yeah. BGs." You get in your Horde alt, you play a Horde BG. Oh man, the Alliance always win the BGs. Horde can't yeah. win a BG. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like didn't didn't Alliance win more AV in vanilla? They must have. Uh, now, or at now, least we make know. them fight for it longer with that bridge. The bridge was nice, dude. I I had so much fun on that bridge, man. I like so back in the day, um, Drakova and I were playing together like back in retail vanilla at one point, and we had the the like the hard pack snowballs or whatever. And what we would oh yeah, do, and you just throw people off the bridge. We would with we that? would post up. Yeah, we would post up with our back against the post. So if they tried to hit us, we'd be fine. And then we yeah. sling it at them and then just knock them off, dude. It was the most fun thing uh, in the world. So yeah, the snowball fun. patch. That was great. Mm -hmm. It was a good Christmas. Like it was like two weeks straight. It was like Christmas break. We just that's like yeah. all we did. Was non stop awesome. snowball bridging. <clears throat> Man. I also liked the where you wear the mind control hat and then you make a horde your pet and then you stand next to the boss and wait for it to expire. <laughs> that was great. Yeah. Uh, oh man, it was good times. Um also this is a bit more sinister. I, I've, I've had people mind control. I, I have been, this can happen. So tilting. You can be, so if the horde is graveyard camping, the Alliance, yeah. like if you're just getting stomped, when you res, you can be mind controlled and ran out of the instance portal and mm -hmm. you get deserter out of the battleground. Cause, oh, cause that's the, awesome. the graveyard is so close to the portal. I need to put so... that on my list for the night of priest. <laughs> yeah, you should do that for your video. There yeah. You <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, <laughs> So here, let's. Uh, is is there anything you guys want to touch on before we go into Q and A a little bit? Let's, let's go into Q and A. You want to Q and A it up? Okay. Um, okay. So this is good. Uh, what are your thoughts? This is from Galneros. What are your thoughts on hybrid classes such as druid and shamans being forced into healing for dungeons and raids? Uh, respecting gets pretty expensive. Any suggestions on how this can be avoided or possibly fixed? And uh, I. I guess, I mean, everybody has experience with this, but I, I probably have the most experience, like, given that I played a paladin. Um, I think that you're not necessarily forced into a healing role as a hybrid class, uh, but all the healers, <clears throat> uh, well, healing, okay, healing is something that's very valuable, right? Like, you need, you need a certain amount of healers for every raid, so whenever you have other classes that can do more damage than you, 
and you can do uh, healing that's just fine. Like you'll see, you'll generally see that like a lot of the hybrids are playing healers. Uh, like you can bring, you can bring an off spec. You can bring a hybrid DPS spec, and, and it's fine. It works. Uh, you can clear the content with it. But you're not necessarily forced out of it. You just have to find a guild that will allow you to go and, and play the spec that way. Like for me, like I play a ret paladin. Um, as far as respecing goes, like if you want to play ret out of raids or uh, like you said, druids or shamans. Let's say let's say you want to play an enhanced shaman out of raid and then in raid you have to play resto. Uh, playing a hybrid class like that does get very expensive. Like that's just that's just the nature of it. Um, but in reality. A lot of people who are doing PvE and PvP are respecking every week, twice a week. Like you're you're specking a special spec for your raid, you're specking a special spec for uh or a specific spec for PvP. And um mm -hmm. that's just the way it is. That's one I missed the the first sentence of the <clears throat> question. Oh was uh, that something about healing or hybrid? Yeah, yeah, basically what are your thoughts on hybrid classes such as druids and shamans being forced into healing in dungeons and raids? So like you don't you're not necessarily forced, right. but it's it's the path of least resistance. That's what it is. Uh, I mean, not, you don't have to do it. Yeah, but it's, it's but it's going to be it's going to be easier for you to find groups if that's what you're if, if that's what you're doing, if you're healing. It's always gonna, if you're a tank, it's going to be easy for you to find a group. That's just the nature of it. Yeah. Mhm. Mm Oh, my mic is muted. Sorry. I was gonna say when I when I think of forest, I think of something like putting a gun to your head and saying you have to buy holy power. Like that's not gonna happen. Obviously, you you can't. You know, if if you're mm -hmm. playing a suboptimal spec, you can't expect everyone to just want to bring you along. It depends on who you're playing with. If right. you're playing with more elitist hardcore gamers, they're not gonna want to have seven resto druids. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna want to have three shadow priests. They might not want to even have a red paladin. That's just the way it goes. Yeah. If you're with more low-key casual gamers, you can probably let it slide. It all depends on who you play with. Exactly. I agree. Right. I think um, – so So this is something that I kind of like had – there was like a weird dichotomy there because I'm uh, I'm pretty good at the game. And mm -hmm. I had this I had this thing where it's like I want to play a Rat Paladin – uh, and I and I would make friends with like a lot of a lot of good players, and uh, I'm the type of player that would you know fit well in that raid environment if if that's what I'm doing. But whenever I play a rep paladin, the way I play the game is not conducive to what they want to do. Uh, it doesn't it yeah. doesn't really it doesn't really add up. So that's why like. Uh, you know, I, I had to earn my way. Like whenever I started playing Red, I didn't stream at the time. I didn't make videos at the time. I started making videos actually, like after I hit level sixty for a little bit, uh, to kind of be like, well, this is how you DPS it's is Red. This is how you do this. And then eventually, I started streaming once I once I got into a raid. Um, but it's yeah. it's definitely not something that's easy. Like you you definitely have to like earn your way. I, I think yeah. um, sometimes I mention like that that I like classic, and then sometimes someone will throw at me the. Well, classic sucks because it wasn't balanced, and it's like, I think WoW was never balanced, and also it doesn't necessarily ruin the game. It doesn't even have to be that bad. If if someone has to pull more weight, like you said, in a dungeon, that doesn't ruin the game. Yeah. You know, you just what's, fill your part. I, I agree. I think what's more important than perfect balance is fun factor. I mean, ima imagine the most balanced game of all time. You would only have one class because everyone would be exactly the same. You mean retail? That's <clears throat> <laughs> it, it, it's get, it's getting there everyone's so homogenized but imagine a game with only one class and mm -hmm. everyone is, exa is exactly the same as the same toolkit it would be perfectly balanced yeah um, but that's that's but what i think about retail it'd be boring like, right it's just not fun that, wow has never been balanced and the only way it has ever become more balanced like improved is by making classes more the same that's exactly. the only only yeah. way they've ever done that and even and now 15 good. years later 15 years later it's still not balanced. Like, yeah, that, that was something. Like, I, I, we were getting those polls. What would you be open to for change in classic? Yeah, you know. Like, and oh, one yeah. of them was like, "Would you be open to us for making it more balanced?" And it's like this thing where everyone is like, "Obviously, yes," but you don't know how to do that. You've never fucking done that. So, like, like it's such a dumb question. Like, they they wouldn't know how to balance it. So, well, I, I would say have them not do that. To me, it's kind of like you. you you have to make a decision, right? And it's like, do you want to have everything perfectly balanced or do you want it to be cool? Cause to me, like everything being perfectly balanced is just boring. Like there's yeah. some things that are just like, okay, like this is, this is cool, right? You know, this, somebody has this, like everybody has something that in some way, shape or form is like kind of overpowered, whatever. I think when you hit a point where it's like, okay, this is just like, absolutely broken then that's a real problem. But I, I don't feel like that's the case in Vanilla WoW. 
uh, like no, certain yeah. classes and certain specs are doing it's better at doing specific things, and that's fine. Like that's that's what's cool about it. That's the that's the class fantasy and everything else that kind of gets uh, kind of packed if, into if that. everyone is really different. Everyone gets their time to shine, and the moment you start to divert <clears throat> from that, you get into this icky zone where everything is kind of different but not quite balanced, and that's mm -hmm. when people are going to start switching classes. Right. I mean, you look at like you look at like high end arena in uh in bfa right now and it's like oh i play i play a healer i play a dps or i play like i play caster i play melee and it's like they'll have like five different class like they'll have five different characters that they play and they just like rotate based on whatever comps they're seeing or whatever like that um i don't i don't know i think that uh if you're talking about it from like a competitive gameplay standpoint and it's what type of game do you want to have is what it comes down to because WoW has done things, and a lot of people said this. They think that uh, in Mists of Pandaria and Cataclysm that the class design was really good. I did not like that. I did not like Cataclysm. I, I really like whenever they started to change from what the game originally was as far as how they designed the classes. It yeah. got super boring to me. They stopped designing the game. They stopped. They stopped having classes. They started having specs. Right? You, you were a retribution paladin. You had a specific skill set yeah. based on what it's like you said you before in in classic you don't play a spec you play a class you play a class yeah. exactly so yeah. you you had this thing a lot of people say that it was actually really good and it might have been from a competitive standpoint like if you were doing high-end arenas or stuff like that I'm, I'm sure it actually probably was pretty good because that's how they kind of were, were tooling the game probably because uh in, in the early days of arena and through wrath like bc and wrath uh, like they, they had MLG and all this stuff and, and WoW was like really, really popular at that time and then it started to kind of die off. So they, surely they probably were trying to capitalize on that and be like, okay, well, let's make this yeah. the focus of the game. But what the problem is is that that's not what an MMORPG is necessarily and, and it starts yeah. to divert from, from what the game and, originally was and then that's when we started to have the fallout, I think. And I think even when I was playing Vanilla as a hunter, it's not like I always felt like, wow, I sure picked the strongest fucking class, you know? It's not mm -hmm. like I always felt that way. Some, you know, I was also a kid, so, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, maybe I would be wrong. Maybe sometimes I'd feel like, wow, those guys are OP, but that wouldn't ruin the game for me because if guys in next gear are stronger than me too, you know? You don't always have to be the strongest. You can just fill your place in the world and, and, and make the best out of it. Yeah, you know? exactly. And, and like, be an eSport, or be an RPG, kind of like what you said, man. Just mm -hmm. pick one: esport or RPG. You can't have both. Right. They're so counter. They're so counterproductive to one another. They're so antithetical to one another. Mm -hmm. Pick one. To pick go on that, it's a bit like if you go and play D and D. You don't. Not everyone is gonna be like, oh, what is the strongest hero? That's what I want to be in D and D. You know, one guy is gonna want to be the bard that just sinks all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, and that, uh, it doesn't have to be uh, equally strong. It could exactly. just be fun. Yeah, And there's actually something really interesting about like trying to find weak classes and trying to mess around with them and customize them to make them better. You know, like there's something special about like theory crafting the underdog and trying to find, okay, you know, what items are available to me? What items can I mix and match? How can I mix and match my spec to make it better? You know, some people like playing weaker classes and, and making them better, kind of like the, the gentleman on top of me. Like, yeah. think about Red Paladin. Like, you know, it's not the strongest class in the game, but I'm sure you get a lot of satisfaction, like, out of, like, theory crafting, finding out which items and stuff to do to make it better, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, like, it's like I play, uh, like, I play Kale in League of Legends, and she's, like, considered totally out of meta and, like, not very good. I mean, that's just, that's how I like to play games. I like to, I like to make things that are not supposed to be good, good. Or at least like make them work. I should say exactly. that's the best. That's good. That that's that's when you start playing with the game instead of playing the game, and that's when you have the most fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think um, <clears throat> I think uh, I totally lost my train of thought, dude. I I don't know what just happened. That was weird. Um, we've been going a long time on the same question. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Maybe let's just go ahead and move on. Uh, if it's important, I'll, I'll probably remember. <laughs> um, uh, this kind of touches on this is this is another tweet, guys. By the way, if you if you have any questions, uh, tweet us hashtag Classicast, <clears throat> and I'll and I'll be looking at those. Um, mm. What do you think will be the most surprising thing in retail classic for someone who has only ever played vanilla private servers? Retail. So the biggest, I guess, the biggest difference between retail classic and private servers. That's a really good question. What do I, you guys think? I think uh, you'll you'll feel happy about your items more because it's more permanent. You know, uh, everything yeah. you do is more permanent, so True. it should be very similar. I don't think someone who played uh, private servers will be very surprised by anything. It's just, you know, generally 
you'll feel better because there's no deadline to your character. I think uh, I think permanence is going to be a really really good thing um, because you never really know with a private server. Like you know, servers get hijacked and shut down, and a new fresh server comes out, and then your server just dies. Kind of like it, it's it's just like a whole thing. But um, and, and, and one thing will be that there's content creators right now. We are literally not allowed to make anything about yeah. WoW Classic, and there being content creators, there being a subreddit where every day there's just fun shit for you to browse through with great videos and stream moments. That is a huge bonus. I think that is super fun. Yeah, I think I think people who who enjoy like consuming content are really going to enjoy that, right? Because like there's people that want like classic WoW content. There's people like myself in the past who have streamed like stream or make videos of like private server stuff. But at the end of the day, whenever you're, whenever you're a streamer or, you know, you, you're a YouTuber, whatever you are, any sort of content creator, the, the end goal is not the end goal, but the, the goal is to make content that people are watching, right? You want people to enjoy your content. If people are enjoying your content, that means you're getting a lot of views, right? Cause people are watching it. And if you get too many views, then your channel grows too much, and then people will see your. I mean, Blizzard will see it, and you'll get DMCA because they legally. It's 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 like a legal thing, right? It's copyright. So yes, it, it's it's antithetical to actually growing a ch like like streaming and, and doing that kind of stuff is antithetical to actually like doing things the right way. Like as, as far as like being like a YouTuber, content creator, and like growing your channel and stuff like that. Unfortunately, um, now I like I mean obviously like I, I grew and I did all that stuff and that's how I started and, and it was a lot of fun. But that's why I had to stop is because I got banned. And once I got banned, it was like okay, well the jig is up, right? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I guess to bring it back to the question, like yeah. this, this is a personal thing. Um, I, I I'm really eager in classic WoW to sort of go completionist mode. I, I've never leveled fishing, I've never leveled cooking. I want to do both of those things. I want to grind every rep to Exalted. I want to try to get every mount I like. And I never had any motivation. I never had any motivation to desire to do that on a private server because I knew that's a yeah. ton of time and at any moment, it's gone. Yeah. Um, so the permanence, the permanence, like I spawned mm -hmm. in Civis. Now, I, I will say this, and again, it's like the same thing that I've been talking about before with... Um, with with the phase content release, I think four phases of content release is is really uh, it's really not good. I mean, I, I think that I don't think it, it's not it's not something to where it's like oh well I'm not I'm stubborn and I'm not gonna play at all because of that. No, I, I mean for me because like I'm, I'm, that's what I want to do. Like that's like I'm I'm still gonna give it like a fair shot, right? Obviously, as a, a player and then as a streamer content creator, like that's what I do. Like my whole channel is based on classic, so I wanna I'm, I'm gonna do that. But mm -hmm. uh, as far as like my that doesn't put like I'm, I'm not at ease about how that's going to be for the game if they go through with that i think it needs to be at least six right they need to at least do six phases because original vanilla was 11 patches and then they're saying four and they're going to package all the content together uh, it's it's i don't know so, to me to me i feel like the, the hardcore players are going to come in and smoke everything because they already know everything yeah. they're going to come in they're going to get so far ahead of everybody else and it's going to it's going to hurt like the, the more casual or like the newer players who don't know everything who who they're you know so, so to, to explain to me or people in the chat maybe mm -hmm. uh, what would be a reason to need more phases than there are big rates because I can see why you need phases well, for big rates of course right but why would you need more than than just like the 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 the, the four rates or something? so there are there are world bosses and dungeons mm -hmm. that are added. Um, that were initially in vanilla not added with the big raid patches that sort of trivialize previous raid content. For example, Dire Maul coming out um, after Molten Core, Dire Maul gear is oftentimes better than Molten Core gear. So if you have Dire Maul out at the same time that Molten Core is out um, at launch, then you're less incentivized to go get mm -hmm. Molten Core gear. Mm -hmm. I didn't know Dire Maul was yeah. better than Molten Core. Yeah. Well, some pieces, right? Some some pieces are better. Like there's some more like spell damage gear and then Molten Core gets an, gets an update in like how the items are in the 1.5 patch. But like uh, they they need to spread this out a little bit because like for example Dire Maul, uh, adding in some things that makes Molten Core inadvertently a little bit easier, ZG the same way with Blackwing Lair, um, and I mean you have Emerald Dragons now Emerald Dragons they now you did like doing world bosses I think back in the day was kind of more like a um, 
like you go do the world bosses you do the thing now it's yeah. like everybody knows like oh well this world boss drops like all this nr gear if we're a high-end raiding guild we want to go in we want to get the world boss kills on the on the emerald dragon so we can get nature resist gear for our tanks and for for our soakers for whoever yeah. else going into aq40 right so that you're, you're so more you prepared. want a patch release for every time you feel like there's a big change in the meta like big change in what is the best gear and you feel like well, that's more patches than they're announcing now i i i don't think i don't think that it has to be exactly done uh like like patch by patch uh yeah I, now i don't think it has to be done that way that's like my own personal preference is doing patch by patch how private servers do it like you, you mentioned like you know like back on uh, like on lights hope right it's it's packaged they do phased content release right i think they do like eight or nine phases right so they've taken patches and packaged them together uh i don't mm -hmm. think that's like a foreign idea but i think four is just way too few um, whether or not they actually changed their mind on this, they said this is something that's still on the table. Whether or not they actually changed their mind on this or not, uh, I don't know. But maybe they will. I hope they do. I hope. I hope Listen, they at least make has six. no clue right until they get the feedback. Yeah, I really so hope they, they change it. Probably will, I guess. Because it, it just doesn't seem like a very good idea to me. Uh, I think if you go through a cycle of classic and then all of a sudden see like, okay, well, all these guys are coming in and they're just like smoking everybody right away, instead of having like a natural like. A, a natural progression instead of just boom big content blocks people will get bored right people will get bored because yeah. who knows how long it's going to be before the next phase maybe like six months i don't know uh people will be frustrated because they feel like they're getting burned out they're getting left in the dust and there's people that uh the people that are getting bored are probably going to be the high-end players who are just like yeah i just did everything real fast you know it's mm -hmm. not it's not quite the same as time gating the content it's uh because somebody might like hear yeah, that it's like making some room for people to get stuff. You well, mean. well, yeah. it, it it makes some room, but also it uh, you're spreading it out better as opposed to like time. Because what's happening now is it's essentially time gated, right? They're putting out a big chunk, but then it's time gated for a long time. Well, let's just what take would this you and like and to make see after the cycle? What would you like to see after two years? Uh, I think they should make would fresh like servers and burning crusade or new new stuff or repeat. I think they should just do fresh. They should do fresh Both. and then and then do Burning do fresh, Crusade. Yeah, yeah, they should do fresh and, and Burning Crusade and. Yeah. I think I'm kind of on team. Give me just a new server every two years, and I'll happily play it on repeat. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I mean, check this out. So right now they do retail WoW expansions every two years, and if they release Classic WoW this summer, they'll have a staggered Classic WoW, Retail WoW, Classic WoW, Retail WoW, Classic WoW. So they're gonna have. I think that's what they're going for. They want to have a really like. There's gonna be another big WoW thing, either Classic or Classic TPC or Retail expansion, every year. I think. I think. Fun. Yeah, I think there's a huge push for TPC, and that makes it a bit interesting because if they go for TPC, well, then you're gonna make wrath, and uh, you know, then you're on that roller coaster of spreading out the players, and that might not be a great idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I wonder what they're gonna do. I think the ideal situation is we get expansions that are based on vanilla, but I also think we all know Blizzard can't do that. So, mm -hmm. you know, they would mess it up. So, yeah, I'd rather play vanilla on repeat. Yeah. Which isn't so bad, right? I mean, there's so much content in vanilla and it, the yeah. experience varies so much from class to class. If you it's a very game, long board game and it's okay to play a board game twice. Exactly, mm -hmm. I like that. Like, well, yeah, uh, and, and I mean, that's a great analogy. And with board games, it's often not so much about the game as it is who you're playing with. Every time you replay Classic yeah. WoW, you make new friends, you're, you're in a new guild, you, you have different experiences. That's, that's what Classic WoW is all about. It's, yeah. it's about the personal... Change server, change class, even. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Change faction, Civ goes forward. Nah. That's, that's, okay, that's disgusting, dude. Come on. Come on. <laughs> we talked about this before the stream. I have, like, the same alliance flag. Uh -huh. As uh, stay safe. Mm -hmm. oh, Got it. that one. Yeah. Right there. <laughs> Propaganda. You're supposed to own. <laughs> Propaganda. The one, the the one I hid behind there. <laughs> there, but you can't see it. Uh, all I have is like uh, uh, art chicken. Are you an artist? Is someone asked. I'm curious also. <laughs> no, you you just uh, fluked out. But I guess you're. Uh, I get the question. Um, mm -hmm. So in two, I, I'm from, I'm not from Taiwan. I was in Taiwan and I just bought a house here and I get the key to my new house in two days. So right now I'm in my parents' house and this is my mom's studio. And oh, she makes okay. all, all kinds of art. So she makes great paintings and uh, like, oh, look at this. This is cute as fuck, dude. Look. 
Oh, there you go. Oh, dude, that's pretty cool, man. That's cool. Yeah. Anyway, she makes all kinds of stuff. Yeah. The chicken is kind of weird, but you know he's living it up. Yeah. <laughs> so this is uh, we'll take a few more questions. Uh, we'll take a few more questions. Um, we'll take some questions from Twitch chat as well here in a second. But uh, one more question. I have never played WoW in my entire life. This is from uh, this is from Aiken. I've never played WoW in my entire life, and I know nothing about it. Do you think it would be a good opportunity to start when Classic comes out? Do you think new players would be so behind and uh, lame compared to experienced veterans? Um, Absolutely I, not. Yeah, I, I think you're going to be fine, dude. Everybody in every game that you ever play, like everybody starts new for the first time. And I think playing Classic, uh, like it's everybody's... the best time ever to start. Yeah. Because like, it's the best WoW has ever been. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, you're easy. getting in that at the right moment. I disagree. Listen, man, if you didn't get rank 14 on every <laughs> class and a clear next Ramus on the friends and family 2002 invite only vanilla mm -hmm. one alpha, then you shouldn't even play classic WoW. You're then stay the fuck away from my server. Yeah, you're not going to, well. yeah, you uh, it's going to be bad. Uh, no, in, in, all, in all reality, uh, you're going to be just fine, dude. There, There's going to be a ton of people who are noobs, right? Like everybody was a noob at some point. Like you know it, it's just that's just life right so you gotta you gotta start at some point i think playing classic would be totally fine uh and, and that's just like a general thing for like any any game that you're playing right i think any game if you want to go in and you want to play a game then go in try it and see if you'll have fun uh in everything that you do yeah 99.999 percent of the time there's gonna be somebody who's better at you I, I just saw a really you relevant you know, comment better in than the you chat. Are. Like, that's just how it's going to go. Someone in the chat just said, in vanilla, there was a huge non-60 player base. And that's true. Like, in retail now, mm -hmm. if, you, if you're new, you have to get max level. And that's when the game starts. Mm -hmm. and, and five minutes later, it ends. That, but that's a different that's problem. True. But mm -hmm. uh, in vanilla, leveling is relevant gameplay. You know, yeah. it's rewarding, relevant gameplay that you can enjoy. And most vanilla players never got to 60 yeah. and even most 60 players didn't rate you know there it's it's not it's very much less elitist than than retail where people start comparing their mythic plus uh, sizes well here's here's the problem with it right so you have you have two two camps the actual gameplay and how the game plans out i i say definitely is like less elitist but as far as a lot of the content and uh atmosphere around classic wow that comes out is that oh like it's a super hardcore game and like you have to do this you have to speed level and it's like dude stop trying to like 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 whenever people say stuff like this it's like you're 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 misguiding them you're you're telling them things that aren't necessarily true and it kind of like uh it makes people think that the game has to be played a specific way when when that's not the case play the game yeah. how you want to play it and, and that's what's so great about vanilla and it's kind of like what we talked about earlier is like comparing like bc was very like end game and all the expansions are like this they're very end game focused but uh World of Warcraft, vanilla was about World of Warcraft. It was about the world, right? So from start to yeah. finish, and, and it's a very, uh, I, I would say it's a very fulfilling experience from start to finish. I, I think WoW is mm -hmm. rewarding when you're happy with your loot, and then you go fuck people up with it. Right. And in retail, you can only do that at max level. But we talk, like we said, in in classic, you don't need to wait with that. You can just do it right away. You, you at level thirty, you can be happy about the things you find. You're gonna have it for a long time, and then you can go fuck people up with it. That that's the story. That's what mm -hmm. you want. You don't need to be max level to to enjoy uh, what there is to enjoy. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I think so too. Okay, we can uh, let's take a few questions from the chat, and uh, and then we can we can wrap it up. Once we're yeah. uh, once we're done with the stream, uh, I'm gonna continue streaming. I'll uh, I'll probably play a little bit more Dark Souls here. Um, once we're done, of course, again, guys, if you haven't followed, uh, tips out, stay safe, TV, Civ HD, all their handles are, uh, are right on the screen and, and myself as well. Yes. Uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, um, questions from the chat. Um, how do you think server population will be across the factions? This is from Exorus. Considering the racials are a big part of grinding, are we going to see more Alliance than Horde, for example? Uh, I don't think I don't think there's a big population imbalance uh, as far as I, I don't I don't foresee there being a big population balance as far as uh, Horde versus Alliance yeah, goes and typically, allow. typically as extreme as it gets is maybe like a 60 40 split that's pretty common Alliance yeah. typically has a couple more people a couple more percentage points on Alliance 
Um, it, but it doesn't impact that, the game very much, I think, right? It's not a huge impact, and that's only on private servers where people are... There is a big effort from private server turbo vanilla nerds to min-max as much as possible. And there's going to be a ton more casual players, people that don't know what they're doing. They're not going to know how to min-max like that. I think that disparity will be lessened in in, in actual yeah. class crowd because there will be new, more noobs. Uh, and there's going to be so. a lot of people coming from retail that just want to stay in Horde. Hopefully, hopefully. I mean, I definitely agree that uh, on retail classic, it's going to be very different. Um, it's people aren't going to be so min max oriented, but it does become problematic in vanilla. Like even a 60 40 split, especially when it comes to world bosses, BRM, like it, it, you do feel it, you do feel it. But, um, yeah, it, it, I don't think it's going to be as bad in retail classic. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. The trick is to, uh, go Alliance and, and don't care about that. <laughs> that True. The, the trick, that, that is the trick. Uh, uh. <laughs> The trick is to go horde and wreck the alliance. That's what it is, dude. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Uh, let's see. Um, Am I going to play female dwarf? Yes. I've been trying to make s go female dwarf battle in, but he's not budging. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. Uh, <laughs> I've, I've got a... You know, I've, I I think I've got the I might have the I'm a little tall, but uh, I think I've got the stature and the hair for it. But uh, other than that, I don't, I don't know. Uh, <coughs> so this is and something I, I think I think yeah, and this is something I want to address. Uh, I think this is good. Uh, what do you think of private server players coming to classic and being elitist jerks to noobs and taking control of the age and other aspects of the servers? So almost pro. I, I wouldn't say like. I mean, there's there's nothing wrong with with being experienced in a game, right? And I and I don't think that. You know, just because somebody has experience doesn't necessarily make them an elitist jerk, right? Um, and 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 they're irrelevant because it's such a small number compared to the armies of people. That's what I was that's gonna that's say. Gonna the yeah. private server players coming to Classic WoW are gonna be—I I would bet like less than two or three percent. They're gonna be a huge minority of Classic WoW players. Yeah, I'd so say yeah, under a percent. There, there will be turbo elitist private server players, but they're gonna be so far and few between. Also, they will probably. Very likely, a lot of them will coalesce onto one server and just kind of play with each other. Um, so you, it, it, you you might play classical and never even run, run into one of them. Well, and, and they carry the 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 weight of that they have to perform. Like if the if that guild with all the, the classic guys wipes on Nex, you get to laugh at them. You know. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna yeah. happen. On, it's gonna happen on my streams. I know that much. We're gonna wipe, and you guys are gonna freaking make fun of me all day. So. Uh, I think, uh, I, but but kind of back to the original point. I, I don't think like just because somebody like played on a private server doesn't necessarily make them like one. It doesn't make them an expert on everything. But on the flip side of everything, or on the flip side of that, it doesn't uh, it doesn't necessarily mean just because you know everything that you're that you're gonna be like an elitist jerk or whatever. And if if they're good at the game, like they're good at the game, I don't I don't think that you can you can't take away from somebody for that. Like if somebody knows what they're doing, then like what like. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I yeah. Like it's. I, I don't think that's. I don't think that's a thing that's that should really be a concern or, uh, from from it both aspects. On, it depends on how, like I don't think just knowing about a game makes you an elitist. It depends on how you behave. It depends. On yeah. Right. And I don't. And I don't think people just because they know know about the game will will inherently make them behave poorly. Right. Now, if they if they know how to run the auction house, then more power to them. Right. That's that's them. They know. Hey, this this raid is coming out. They're gonna need you know AQ is coming out. They need nature resist. We need to go get elemental earth or whatever. And then I'm gonna farm a bunch and then sell it right before AQ comes out. Like that's I mean that's what they know to do, right? I don't know. I, I think I think more power to them. Yeah. yeah. I think I think. But how how you uh I think how you act is is a totally different thing. Um. <clears throat> let's see. How quickly from launch do you think MC will be cleared? Oh, what's up, Kenny Marsh? Dude, it, I think it'll be cleared first day. I think I think it'll be cleared first Wait, day. Wow. I think that it's that it's you available. Day six, like, like, day six, day seven. Yeah. Well, well, I mean, I mean, as soon as uh, I think as soon as people get in there, they're gonna be able to clear it. That's my point. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm talking about progression, right? I I don't. Yeah. Think, so I don't, this question depends: Are they going to time gate? So let's say Classic WoW comes out on the first. Molten Core not, might not be there till the 14th. Are they gonna time gate raid releases? Um, but yeah, def definitely. The first day people go in, they will kill it. Like, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. If, if if people go in there, they will walk out with a Ragnaros kill, 100. percent Yeah. Um, oh well, I guess he said, he said from 
they say from if it's launch? not time gated yeah, sorry, from launch yeah, yeah if it's not time gated yeah. the big the biggest requisite to, or prerequisite to getting into <clears throat> to, to, to killing regular to server launch is just having people at level 60. so yeah. if you have fast levelers and your guild is organized and efficient you can get in there within like i mean what happened on on this most recent server i think like four and a half or five days or something right uh... so People, people can get in there very, very quickly. I think Imagine I... like giving it your all and you're like level uh, 40 or something after five days. You've been playing nonstop and then someone ganks you in full tier one. Yeah, <laughs> it'd be, uh, that'd be rough. That's <laughs> I mean, rough. But no, I, I do think now as far as from launch, because he, he asked how, how quick do I think it's going to be cleared? And then he asked how, how far from launch. Um, from launch, it's hard to tell, right? Because just like Stay Safe said, uh, the biggest time gate is is having the people leveled up to to get in there. But uh, as far as like actually like doing the raid itself, I, I think it's going to be cleared the first day because people will know what to do. Um, or well, I guess the first. Uh, well, you need a week, right? What do you mean a week for what? Because because you need to you need to get all the the rep and stuff. No, yeah. you can. Uh, no, you don't. You you can farm the rep just super super fast. You can farm it uh, out, and then you go in. What you do is you go in, and you can do the quest within one run. You can kill Regnos first run. Okay. Yeah. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yep. There you go. <clears throat> so, uh, is Paladin tanking viable in raids? Uh, you can have a specific role. You can have a specific role, but um, it, it's it's. As far as like viability versus being optimal, like that's two different things, right? Like there's some specific fights. Specific goal being the side bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so like I, I think that uh, like you, you take some fights, right? You take some fights like um, uh, is it Ebon Rock? You take you take Ebon Rock in BWL and uh, like he he does the you you need the taunt rotation for him, right? You need a taunt for that boss. Like that's that's one that like you're not gonna really be able to have Paladin ta uh, tank on, but. Um, you have like a paladin tank like doing suppression room type stuff i think that's fine and they can tank some bosses too i mean there's there's good t paladin tanks like in the private server scene uh especially like i mean you look at people with like a, a thunder fury or something like thunder fury is absolutely insane for prop paladins because of how the proc rates work uh you get you get double chance to proc whenever you have seal of righteousness up because it's it counts as two two hits so are you gonna tank are you gonna tank in the plastic <clears throat> with a thunder fury s fan? Uh I don't know. I wanna I wanna tank a ZG at some point, but I, I don't think I'll main prop paladin. As fun. I have a theory that I've been dying we'll see. to talk to you guys about because you're uh -huh. experts, right? <clears throat> I'm really big on being Beastmaster. Yeah. Okay. And I have a theory for Molten Core. Okay. okay? You need some AOE healing, right? In Molten Core. Like like you get some AOE damage, you need AOE healers. But um, what if you get a few AOE healers, okay, hear me mm -hmm. out, and literally everyone else is a Beastmaster with a turtle? Yeah, that would work. That would be perfect. Yes, yeah, I, speed I, run, new speed run. <laughs> <laughs> just, just fucking <laughs> keep throwing the turtles at him. There's no way you would ever get aggro. There's yeah. like 35 turtles in there. Mm -hmm. Jack, even if Jack and Dogs goes 20 turtles deep, they would be revived. You know, yeah. I, I, f I feel like when it comes out, I will make the Turtle Beastmaster only guild. Okay. World Couldn't first, world first clears. Are you, are you playing NA or EU, by the way? You're playing EU. I think NA, because the, the thing doesn't matter in WoW. And I'd rather play with the real, the real server. There you, you know, go. play with us, dude. Play with us. But go hard, go hard. Go hard. I don't know. You don't sound like Turtle material. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Um, <clears throat> yeah, someone in the chat just said, might work, but what are you going to do with the drops? That's a lot of rolls, man, for that yeah, hunter item. You just got to earn it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see. Our, hmm. Our arms warrior is good. So, so how, Billy, how it works in Classic is uh, arms warriors are actually really good at PvP, but uh, you're, you're not really going to bring them in a, in a PvP environment or PvE environment. Uh, just because Fury is so good. Fury is like the hardest scaling melee DPS and uh, arms can, uh, arms are just not as good, but in PVP they're like insanely strong. So. And Mortal uh, Strike takes a debuff. Mortal Strike does take a debuff slot as well. Yeah, good point. Uh, now, arms actually does really good uh, cleave damage, but it like, it's just like, just just like for trash, right? Like you can cleave and sweeping strikes and all this stuff. But uh, as far as like for, for like boss DPS, generally speaking, you're, you're gonna do better as Fury. Um, 
So let me see. Um, let's take one more question. Let's take one last yes. question here and see. Um, Hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking for, I'm looking for, I'm going to go in on, um, hold on with all the no changes and all, and the, and no wow tokens and such. And with all the money sunk into making this classic wow by blizzard, after about six months, the nostalgia will be over for the majority of player base that came back to play Classic. At some point, WoW will have to find other ways of paying for the hosting. You have people asking for more and more without considering the profitability of this Blizzard. Well, no, I mean, I think it's going to be absolutely profitable because I think they're having a shared sub. Just because ha you're, you have a shared sub doesn't necessarily mean that you're not making any money off of Classic. Because you're going to have an o like a, a very, very large number of people playing classic who do not play retail wow and just don't care yeah. at all for retail wow so they're going to be making plenty of money off of it yeah, yeah. i just dis i disagree with every premise in this question after about six months then this and, and yeah over. so i i don't think i i think first off i think classic wow is a game that can stand on its own two legs without nostalgia there will be new players that will be playing it that have never played before in fact i would say most people playing private servers have never played actual vanilla wow there are new people coming to vanilla that were interested about you know the, the origins of the game six months is sort of like an arbitrary number um, let's say someone is playing for nostalgia. Uh, I'm not sure where you got six months from. Um, I think people will be very interested to finish the game that they never finished when they were younger if they did play before. I mean, not many people cleared Nax or got rank 14. Right. So I think pr probably people will be eager to finish AQ and get rank 14 and do Nax and finish all their goals that they had to set aside when they you know, were playing 15 years ago. On top of that, like Esfon said, there's going to be a lot of new people subbing just to play Classic. The, mm -hmm. game, will be, the game will be paying for itself. Um, so I don't agree with that either. Mm -hmm. yeah i think uh and, and also like kind of going back to what we were saying earlier on in the podcast nostalgia is certainly a factor but the like classic wow is about the gameplay dude the gameplay is unreal like it's it's so good i I, I i honestly I, sub doesn't damage them anyway because after bfa no one's gonna want to play retail anyway so <laughs> it's gonna be a completely separate market yeah i mean it, it is what it is it is what it is um <clears throat> But guys, I think it's uh, I, I think I think that's a good uh, good point to end it on. Civ, thank you so much for joining us, man. Guys, if you haven't followed Civ HD, uh, please go follow sub to his YouTube channel. Uh, Civ HD tweets on Twitter, uh, tips out baby, and stay safe TV as well, of course. Uh, yeah, seriously, Civ, thank you so much for joining us, man. This was a lot of fun. Thank you. I, I was I've been wanting to come here for a long time, and I'm happy that I was invited. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming it, on, man. It was great. It was a pleasure, man. It was a pleasure, man. Thank mm -hmm. you. So, guys, uh, I'm going to continue my stream. Uh, probably play a little bit of Dark Souls 3. Uh, just, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Soon, soon there will also be Classic Cast t shirts. Yeah, of course. Soon there will be Classic Cast t shirts as well. Uh, I'm working on, uh, I'm working on that. So, that'll be, uh, that'll be in, in my merch store. And, uh, yeah, that'll be in the Unless future. Unless tips out, rips through all of them. <laughs> right, right, of course. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much for joining us for Classic Cast. And, uh, those of you who want to stick around for Dark Souls, feel free. And the rest of you guys, we'll see you guys next time. Take it easy, boys. Peace.